Right. Facebook streaming. Let's do it. Let me know when we're, when we're proper live. Right. Right, we're li going live into the Facebook group now. Cool. And uh, I'm starting to let people into the room. I see a few familiar faces there. There is indeed. And our live stream's just going into the Facebook group now. Are you going to mute everyone, Jake? Otherwise, if yeah, every, gonna... everyone's everyone's so, muted automatically. Okay. No offense, people, if you're do. listening, but it's just... <laughs> just waiting for this going live now. So, sorry, Scott, did you say something? Oh, not you. Oh, how did he get in without being muted? Hang on, I can mute him. <laughs> Just give me a thumbs up, Dave. You're feeling better, mate? Good stuff. The only person I know has actually had the virus and he's looking nice and fit. He's got looking less green now. So that's a good, uh, it's a good thing. Right. We're heading up to 27 people in the room. 27. It's already the, it's already the greatest attended meeting of the decade. And our live stream is going into the Facebook group. We should give it another moment or two. We've got a few more people coming in. All right, put me fine. Do not disturb. 29. All right, do not disturb. Done. Who we got on? I'm gonna have a quick flick through and see who we've got on. Do, 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 do. Right, while you're doing this, that's got. I'll do a quick introduction. Good evening. I'm Jamie Morgan. I'm the Southeast Regional Chair for the British Institute of Professional Photography. I'm also lucky enough to be the social media uh, manager for the Institute as well. And I'm really pr privileged to introduce Scott Johnson tonight. We're going to be doing a webinar with Scott, talking all about preparing for print competitions and getting the most out of print competitions and our qualifications as well. We're really lucky at the moment that we're all holed up at home. So we've got great participants tonight. We've got about 66 people that pre-registered for, for tonight and we've already got 35 in the room. And uh, Scott's gonna be taking us through some of the members images that have come in over today. And we're also gonna be talking about the process of actually going through the print qualifications, uh, print competitions. So I'm gonna hand you over to Scott. Scott's gonna tell us a little bit about his role with the Institute and uh, a few other bits and pieces. First of all, I'll just give you a couple of quick notices. We've muted everybody in the room apart from myself and Scott for the moment. Along the bottom of your screens, there is a, a chat button. It's about five or six uh, buttons along from the bottom of the screen. And we're recording tonight's uh, webinar. It's also going live into the Facebook group and it will be available to be looked at again um, after tonight on our YouTube channel. But if you want to ask any questions throughout the, uh, the talk tonight, by all means, drop a little message in the, the chat button. Scott's going to give us a few breaks throughout this evening and I'll be able to ask those questions to, to Scott and uh, we might open up a, a few of those questions to the, to the floor as well. So I'm going to hand over to Scott now. Tell us about what you're doing with the Institute, Scott. Firstly, good evening, everyone. I uh, hope everyone is healthy and uh, staying at home. That's the most important thing we can start, start with at the minute. Uh, I am very well. I am fit and healthy. Uh, I am, yeah, I've got double fellowship with the Institute, fellowship in weddings, fellowship in documentary, um, and my role as chair of, uh, chair of qualifications with the Institute is going to be starting very soon. So I want to be in charge of setting standards and looking after the judges and getting teams together for qualification and the awards. So I'm very much excited to be involved with that. And I want to thank Martin for the opportunity. 
So tonight, um, those of you who have seen me speak before, I'm going to be covering some old ground. Uh, those that haven't, this is going to be how to think like a judge and how to kind of get your head around potential award winners. I've been very fortunate to, you know, win a few big awards in the last few years. So, uh, you know, just to try and pass that on is what I'm here for, really. Um, we're going to be asking questions throughout the night. But what we want to do first things first, uh, in the comment box on Facebook or in Zoom, I want you to type in your name and where you are listening or watching from. Um, name, county, country. God, don't say that too quick. That could be interesting. Um, and then um, and then country, and then let me know where you're from because we're going to be giving a prize away later on to the person that is the furthest away, and especially if you're in a different country. That'd be amazing. Um, so, yeah, it's just going to be a little bit of uh, a little bit of PowerPoint and then a little bit of Q&A, and then we're going to go into the images that you've kindly sent in. Now, I have not seen the images at all. Jamie did send me a little presentation earlier, but much like... Uh, qualification and judging for awards. I much prefer to see the images uh, straight off the bat and critique them there and then. I don't like to prepare too much when it comes to uh, images. So I'll be seeing them for the first time tonight with you so I can give you an honest critique. Now, I'm not here to you know, batter any images. I'm here to give constructive criticism on how to potentially lift your images from where they are um, with refinement and, you know, we can move them up to hopefully get an awards. Now, with the awards just uh, announced last week, we can start the ground running on 2020 as much as we can. Now, obviously, we are aware that there's not much happening in the world of photography uh, at the minute, but if you've got a personal project or stuff that you had that you are looking to uh, enter for this year's awards, then we can uh, give you some insight into how to you know, get you from a 79 to an 80 and get that silver and that first merit, which is really important. So, Jay, I'm going to start this off. Do I need to share my screen with you? or Yeah, if you just uh, hit share screen, then everybody should uh, should see what you're uh, sharing, my friend. All oh, right, let's close my browser down first. I'm going to share that. Do we in a minute? It's... <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's do if I do that, and then I do that. You should be able to see exactly what I'm seeing, mate. Is that right? Yeah, that's perfect. Wicked. So the first thing that I found um, that helped me along the road is to think like a judge. Um, what is appealing to a client is not necessarily the same image that's going to be appealing to a judge. It's very, very important that we separate the two. It's very, very important that just because you get 10,000 likes on Facebook, don't enter it into an award thinking you're going to win because the chances are you probably won't because the brides and grooms and people that are attending the weddings are looking at the image for a very emotional, personal reason, whereas a judge is looking at an image from a very different technical reason. So it's very important to separate the two um, completely. So the biggest advice I've got is attend some live judging. I can't stress that enough. If ever you have ever been to SWPP convention, attending the live print judging is the best classroom you can ever have. Uh, if those of you have been fortunate enough to have been to WPPI in Vegas, the classroom and there, the live judging, you've got eight judging rooms there, judging all genres across portraits and weddings. What you if you if you come away from a live judging room having not learned anything, then you've either been asleep or you've been, you know, playing Minecraft on your phone. So I really think you can all be going into a live judging and pick up the comments, pick up the critiques. Even if you've not entered, the comments from the judges are really going to help you lift your own photography by, by taking that on board. It's really, really important. So as far as the judges are concerned, this is how we judge. These are the 10 elements on which we judge by. And this is what we're looking for from every single print. So impact as in wow factor, creativity and style, composition, print quality, center of interest, lighting, color balance, really important, technical excellence, photographic technique, and storytelling. That's what's going through our head the second we have a print come in front of us, whether we're judging qualification or judging for awards. And these, this is not in any specific order. One does not override the other, and one is no better than any other. So we have elements there, which is exactly what we're going for. Now, personally, if I'm judging, if, I'm, if my socks are being blown off straight away, 
impact wow factor is a very big tick in my box. If I'm thinking, holy crap, I wish I'd taken this image straight away. I'm going to be, you know, scoring, scoring fairly highly. But then I get to have a closer look and I start looking at the composition, the print quality, center of interest, lighting. Now, what do I mean by creativity and style? Is it something unique? Is it something different? We judge um, for SWPP and WPPR, we have scoring criteria. And when we start getting into the 90s, that's when we start to like see an individual creativity when it comes to imagery. If you're copying someone else or you're copying someone that's won three or four years ago, we are going to see that image. We know about the images. We look at all images throughout the years and we, we know what's winning. The social media is a good thing. Also, it's a bad thing because people that are winning uh, from WPPI, SWPP, MPA, BIPP, the images are being posted online and we know if someone's being plagiarized. So you have to be very, very careful. Don't be surprised if you think you've done something and all of a sudden you get questioned, well, I've seen this done before. You'd be very, very careful. So we want to see your own individual creativity and style composition, self-explanatory. You know, is it deliberately composed? Have you done something on, you know, if you just made a mistake and it's on, off on a third, is it, is it not cropped properly or should it, can it be improved? That's what we're looking for for composition. Print quality, we come onto that later on, but don't forget guys and girls, this is a print competition. Print quality is paramount. You'd be very, very surprised the amount of images that we look through when we're doing print competition judging. If the image was printed on a different paper, it would have scored better because the paper choice is wrong um, or not wrong, but doesn't suit the image um, that you, that's being presented. So print quality, um, paper choice is absolutely massive. Center of interest, that would be, are we being distracted from the subject within the print, i.e., is there a dirty great blob on a wall behind the bride's head? Are we being pulled away from what you want as, a, as a, an entrant and a, an, an author of the image? Are, is our attention as judges being pulled away from our, the bride's face or the newborn? Or has you got a beautiful landscape, but you've got a telephone pile on, in the, in the, on the horizon somewhere? That's the type of thing. Think about stuff like that. This is what we're looking for. Lighting. Is it been beautifully lit? Have you got too much light? Not enough light? Again, pretty self-explanatory. Color balance is key as well. You'd be very surprised um, when we're judging that there's a tonal range. There's, a t there's um, errors in the printing where you've got too much magenta. You've got too much green in the blacks, for example. So always make sure you've got your, cut, your screen calibrated. Always make sure you do test prints. And always make sure that your black and whites are black and white. and We don't have any color casting going on there. Technical excellence post-production. Guys, I've tried to hide many things from judges. We know what we're looking for. We've all tried to hide the same things you're trying to hide um, when it comes to cloning and content aware and things like that. We've all done it. So don't think, oh, you know what? They're never going to see this. One of us will. Generally, if we're doing a live print judging, there's five people in the room. There's generally going to be one person that's really, really hot on things like post-production and retouching. I was judging over in Northern Ireland um, before, at the start of May, the start of March, sorry. There's a beautiful picture on the rocks. And obviously, we're looking for center of interest and it was an off-camera flash so i'm not thinking right where has this flash come from and you start looking at the image and the, the, the cloning on the rocks was obvious that they've been cloning out so be very very meticulous when it comes to cloning things out like light stands and uh people that assistants especially so if you're using an off-camera flash or a light source make sure that the retouching is flawless because we will be looking for where that person was to get the light source there so be very very careful about that again Photographic technique, have you used the right f-stop? Have you used the right shutter speed? Have you used the right, is there any, um, you know, is there any lens flare? Is there too much flare? Is there any um, magenta casting on the, as it apparition, I think it's called. Um, print quality, go back to that. There's two very different things. You have what's called banding. Now, people think banding is when the sky starts to break up. Now, banding only occurs when you have uh, a, dirty rollers or you have dirty print heads what you're looking for is actually called artifacting and artifacting is when the sky can't the tonal range between the bright part and the dark point your camera can't 
um, can't deal with it. The print, the file can't deal with it. So it's very, very important that you're not editing off JPEGs. So always try and take a raw capture for the competition, convert that into a 16-bit TIFF, edit and retouch from the 16-bit TIFF and from the point of uh, printing at that point and that point only to turn to a JPEG because every time you open and close a JPEG, the integrity of the file gets weaker and weaker and weaker and artifacting becomes more and more prominent. So be very, very careful when it comes to stuff like that. And storytelling, you know, just because there's a naked girl on a rock doesn't mean that it's telling a nice story. There has to be, um, you know, there has to be um, thought, there has to be uh, a concept there. Don't just do stuff for the sake of doing stuff. If you're telling a story from a wedding image, tell the story. The image that won SWPP uh, this year with the little page boy, those that have seen it dragging up the flower girl um, up the yard, was one of the most great storytelling images I've seen for a very, very long time. You could read so much into that image. So make sure if you are telling, if you, if you want to try and convey a story, think about using a print title as well. Untitled one, and you've got this most amazing image, but you, as a judge, we're not quite getting it because the, we, we need to know more about the story. Title your image appropriately. So don't just think, oh, I'm just going to stick it in and call it untitled one or untitled two, or even worse, DSCF underscore 9876592.jpg. You know, think about the title. Um, a good friend of mine, James Musterwhite, has always told me to drink two bottles of wine and then start to title my print. I haven't done that yet. I can't recommend doing that, but certainly it gets your mind thinking. So, this is what we're thinking of when we're looking at um, for looking for uh, prints when we're judging. These are also things that I think are very, very important: preparation, presentation, post-production, and printing. Preparation is just doing the research at the venues, looking at the bride, looking at the groom. Again, I'm talking from a wedding perspective, but do some research if you're doing portraits. Do some research into the sitters. Do some research into their story. Are they coming in for a reason? Tell that story presentation think about paper choice think about the mount think about how you're going to cut the mount now we saw some oval mounts this year we've seen some circular mounts this year we have seen in the past uh, mounts where we've had fire breathers and the and the author of the image has actually burnt the edge of the mount to convey the story of that as well so think about that post-production we've already thought about it get your retouches spot on get your you know everything in post-production you're retouching your after effects don't go too hdr don't over sharpen again this is the thing that's going to really kind of hurt your image if you're doing things like that and then printing think about print quality we've just talked about that next one <laughs> Selection of images. I know um, normally this time of year I would have a folder on my desktop with 2020 on it. I still have it at the minute. So every time I'm doing a wedding, um, I'm putting the images that I think would work well for competition into that folder. And then eventually when we get to about October, we will look at that uh, folder and I'll start to make my initial call for award winning images or hopefully award winning images. So don't just you know think, oh, I'll remember where it is because you've got hundreds of shoots you're doing. The chance of you actually remembering what you've done and when you've done it is quite rare. And you actually, if you have a folder on your desktop with images in it, you'll forget about some of the prints that are in there. And you actually, you might, you might start surprising yourself. You think, oh, I forgot I took that. And then you can start making the process um, in from there. Um, those of you that have mentors, it's still really, really important to get a second opinion. I think um, I had a great mentor, Kevin Wilson, you know, for my fellowship. And I still, you know, I, I, you know, bounced ideas off him all the time for fellow. And when I was going through that process and even still now I speak to different people, different judges, different opinions, because, you know, even though I'm very privileged to you know to have won awards and, and judge prints, it's very easy for us as, as photographers to get so invested and emotionally engaged with our own work. We don't see our faults because, we are looking from a different reason. So it's always, always, always ask someone, ask one of your friends. If you've got a friend in photography or you have a mentor through the Institute, just say to them, Hey, you know what? I'm thinking about this print for the competition. What do you think? And they might go, yeah, it's brilliant. Or they might go, what are you thinking? No idiot. Get rid of it. So it's good just to kind of get that idea and bounce ideas off people. It's really, really, really important because I have scored a 72 at competition because I thought a print was going to score a 90. And then all of a sudden 
the print comes back and I'm, and I thought, you know what, they're absolutely right because I love the image and because I fell into that trap of having a lot of online comments and likes and shares, I thought it's going to fly. It's going to absolutely fly. And it scored 72. And I was really, really upset because I thought it'd be better. And I, but if I would have asked someone, they'd have gone, don't put it in, save yourself 20 quid, buy me a drink at the bar and say, thank you later on because it's not going to go anywhere. So it's always, always, always important to try and ask a mentor where possible. Um, image control. Image control is really, really important. Uh, capture the image as correctly as possible in camera. Don't rely too heavily on Photoshop and post-production because you can draw only so much out of the files. Now, personally, with my Fujifilm cameras, I have the histogram in the viewfinder at all times. So I know when I'm peaking highlights or my blacks are dropping out, but also I know how much I can recover from the shadows or highlights. So I know that even if I'm a stop under when the shadows, I know that I can pull that back. I don't think, oh, you know, I'll just take it and I'll Photoshop it later because that's when you start getting problems with file, file quality. That's when you start getting problems with print quality because you're trying to recover far, far too much out of the file. So try and get it as right in camera as possible. And for the love of God, straighten the prints. Architects spend a lot of time in university and doing architectural degrees they make buildings straight please please make the building straight there's nothing worse than seeing the horizons and the verticals that aren't straight on a building if you're doing something specific with a, with a wide angle lens then keep it as it is but if you're doing a shot where they're in a building or an alcove or against a pillar please straighten the pillar because again from my point of view as a judge i would mark that one down because i haven't thought about the image properly and I would mark it down. This is what I mean by that. This is a capture off camera, straight out of camera. Now, that little H there, obviously that goes. Now, my daughter, who's six and a half, every time, so when she was about four, I said to her, you see that H on the wall? She said, yeah. She went, that's where a hedgehog's buried. So every time she walks past a little H on the wall, she said, that's where a hedgehog's buried. So just we caveat there. So, but this is how it's taken. As you can see, it's not straight and there's all sorts of things wrong, but the image is, you know, it's there. So the first thing you want to do when you're thinking about starting to change an image is get the tone right first. Don't start doing all your Photoshopping, your cloning, everything else out from there because when you start putting tones on it, it will start to show up your uh, a clone your cloning your healing your content aware because if you start to change the silver effects pro for example it will start to show the work so always try and get the the, the tone first and then start your retouching so what i've done here if you can see straight away i've gone in and i've straightened up the verticals and i've straightened up the horizons i've got the image right as i want it to be entered first i've then i've, I've then applied the tone so straight away, I'm going to crop in to here. And I thought, perfect. That's absolutely amazing. We'll do that. But if you can see on your screen on the right-hand side, I'm pointing. You can't see me pointing. Um, there's a tiny little slither, which I thought well, I didn't notice first off. So if you go to the next print, we just get rid of it. So now I'm thinking, that's perfect. I've got, I'm happy with the tone. I'm happy with the pose. I'm happy with, the, with everything about it. It's brilliant. I did my test print. So center of interest, as I said before, is very, very important. Those of you that can't see, just above the bride's head, in the center of the alcove, are some grubby white marks. So basically, that is what we're talking about, center of interest. So I'm looking at the bride, and my eyes are being pulled away from the bride to the center of interest, which is now those grubby white marks on the wall. So it's very, very important to get rid of those. So you get rid of those bang that's how it was entered and this print scored 87 in competition in swpp a few years ago so it's a really good way of saying so from capture to entry what i was talking about earlier about image control is never never have a black image 
and never, never have a white one. It's very, very important to control your highlights and your shadows. Now, what do, what do I mean by that? So when you go into Photoshop and you hit the um, info tool, you have a numerical value from zero to 255. It's very, very important never to go zero and never go 255 because zero is solid black and 255 is, is white burnt out. At 255, the printer will not put ink on the paper. So my advice would always be going to your curves and lift the bottom left-hand corner from zero up to five or six and the top right-hand dot from 255 down to about 245, 246 because that way, even if you've got a little bit of a highlight on there, the printer will put ink on the paper. So you won't get bronzing and you won't get you no know, uh, underneath the print lights. You won't see where there's no ink on the paper. It's very, very important to do that. So here, as you can see, what I've done underneath the, the guy's uh, bum, for example, on the chair, that would be solid black. That would give me a reading of zero on there. So I've, I've changed the tone. I've then gone in and lifted that up. And you can now see the detail on the chair. I've, lit, I've gone from five up to... I, I haven't. Got that. I can probably tell you, but it's, that's probably gone up to about ten. To make sure we've got detail and it's not going to bronze when it goes to the when it's not going to go to the um, to print. It's very very important to pick the perfect crop as well to the image. It's very very easy to fall into the trap. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to shoot it as it came out of camera, three by two or four by three or anything like that. Don't be scared to crop. The best thing I learned when I'm going for when I was going for my fellowship is to get the corners and just play around with the crop and just kind of zoom in and work the crop from their letterbox square squares a very underrated crop in my opinion i love a square crop this was obviously off camera we played about with it we've lifted the shadows we've brought the highlights down we've played with the crop and that's how it was entered into there so two very different images there um, the final print after a test print, we actually got rid of the bright highlight on the top left, but this is again, just an example of why it's important to test print from there. Post-production, never, never, never be scared to post-produce. This was an image, um, it's my brother on his wedding day. This was an image that actually went into my fellowship panel, but as you can probably agree, it didn't go in like that. Never be scared to retouch things out. If you cannot get it right in camera, then get a good retoucher or have a good go yourself because we can turn this print into that print just by retouching an image uh, in from there. Same for this. Great image. Um, very ugly curtains. Uh, downhaul. Thankfully, they've changed the curtains now. Um, this is where 255 can actually work in your favor. So basically, at 255, this is, you can probably see, if depending on your bandwidth, to the left, behind the bride's back you can see some two white marks it depends and this is where you want to blow the highlights out completely and make everything white because you don't want to have a little bit of something in the neck curtain that you cannot see and then replicate that from through cloning so it's always good to go to 255 clone it all out and then bring it back down again because you can turn this image into that image quite quickly and quite easily just by cloning things out it's always the little things that will trick you out as well. Always, always, always. So you can see here, we've got a lot of issues on with this with, with, with this print, so you can, this image, sorry. So you can see the things on the floor, the fire escape sign, the guy in the window, the blue dot, the blue dot on the right-hand side to the left of the, um, of the image there. It's often the little things that are the most distracting. So the big things can play a big part in turning a good image into a great image but it's often the little things get forgotten about so we retouched this and took the bits out from there as well this is how it was um retouched first and then we went into um then we went into the uh the toning and then we went in it got entered um, so from straightening again so we got bright highlights there no center of interest is is a long way away from what we're actually looking for from the bride we strain it up we retouched the bits out and that's how it was entered into there so this is the point where if you were in the room with me we'd do a little test um but we can't do that because you're not in the room uh but we'll do it anyway this was a print straight at our camera so 
this is where we, this is how I start my process off in from here. So I'm looking for dark spots, some spots, dark spots. I'm looking for highlights. I'm looking for distracting elements. So you can see bottom left plugs. You can see lampshade. You can see to the right the door handle and the door. So first things first, we lighten it all up and bring it into there, which will then also start to tone out and see other things that are distracting so between its legs you can see there's some dirt on the skirting board so that would have to go because again as a judge i'm looking for things that are taking my eye away from the point of interest so from here we crop it all in and that's the crop how it went there but that's not how it was entered again one of the things we noticed uh, said at the start about one of the elements center of interest the brightest point of this image is not the groom's face. It's very, very important. The brightest point of this image is actually his collar. So my eyes being pulled away from his face down to his collar. So we, we just toned the collar down. We toned his hand down and we also toned down the, uh, the cushion to his right and the circular um, cushion to there as well. Because again, it, we were just pulling our eyes away from, from the interest. And that came third in SWPP a couple of years ago. So it's worth doing that. Print selection is important. Guys, I cannot stress enough. Your images will look different on the screen as they do on your print. I've wasted hundreds of pounds on not test printing, test printing my images and just sending them straight into competition. I've, not, I've missed out on cloning issues. I've missed out on highlights. I've missed out on bronzing. I've missed out on artifacting. All of that because I haven't tested my prints. It's very, very important to test your prints. Very, very important. This is the folder. So I have a groom folder, a bride folder, a couples folder, and then I have a everything else folder. Then we lay it all out. You get all the brides. Then we lay each bride out and we work out which print we're going to enter. Once we do that, we test print. This was my test print in before SWPP back in January. Now you may ask why are they hang it upside down? It is very, very important to do your test prints and then hang them upside down. The reason is your brain cannot really work out what it's looking at when a print is upside down and you will start to notice imperfections in the file, imperfections in the image. Bright points will start to become brighter and you'll start to look at things without looking at the bride or, the, or what you want to look at first. So if you go in a bit closer here, you can see my markings on the print. So I've got some things I need to retouch out um, with crosses. So that's what so a cross would be if I'm going to take something out. And I would put a little line, like a little, uh, like a, when you're doing video, you get the little um, the zebras marks. So I'll, I'll zebra something that, I, that is too bright and I'll tone that down. And also test printing. So this in the, this print up here, it was too green. The test print was too green, so I added magenta. So it's very, very important to do to do this. The bottom, the print below, I've put a circle and put up. That needs to be lifted up because I'm looking at the circle in the skylight before I'm seeing the couple. And that's where I don't want to happen because as a judge, when you turn it round, all you're going to see is a skylight. You're not going to see the couple. So it's very, very, very important to get um, that kind of thing done. And then when I've done that, this was my fellowship panel, but it's really, really important to show you can then see the crop marks on the prints if your bandwidth is any good. And you can see that we we cropped the image to the print so you can see how it's going to look. And it's the most, most best way of doing things by doing things in print. Get your test printing done, guys. I cannot stress that enough. So the answer to luster or the eternal question, luster or glossy, my argument would be neither. I would always go with Hallow Muller Fine Art Photo Rag Paper or Graphic Studio HD Fine Art Paper with their, their HD printing, I believe is second to none. Um, I've been using Graphic Studio prints for the last two comp last two years for competition, um, and it's no coincidence that since I started using competition prints for Graphic Studio and I started to use um, do test printing, I started to get better results and come you know get more and more firsts. So it's really really important that that's that's literally the keynote done for now. So if you've got any questions, Jay. Um, 
let's let, let's have some questions, mate. Because I cover a lot of information there. You, I hope you got any questions. Now would be the time to do that. We have indeed. First of all, we've got a quick question from Ian Cartwright. He says, are, "Scott, are inkjets considered to be an inferior medium these days?" No, not at all. I've got many, many good friends of mine that do their printing at home. If I had space here. I would get a printer and I would do my own printing here. So as long as you've got the right paper choice and you're cleaning your heads regularly and you control, you can control your banding. There is no reason why your home prints cannot win. Sanjay Jogia, a very good friend of mine. He prints his own stuff and has won many, many awards, both nationally and regionally by printing his own work. So no, I would say it's absolutely fine to print at home. Uh, next question we've got is from Jane. She said, what size would you normally do your test prints up to Scott? Um, initially I would do 12, eight by 12 and 12 by eight because I want to print exactly what's on coming straight out the camera. So I see a complete crop and it's because I'm printing 12 by eight one, you can go nine by six, but obviously 12, eight is, is obviously bigger. You can see more. Um, and also you can play around with it a little bit more there, um, as well. So eight by uh, 12 by eight, a four, and then, um, I can work on the crop from there. And then, so I do two rounds of test printing first on any paper cheapest one luster paper or generally luster then when i get to my final round of test printing i will then print on the paper that i intend to submit the image on because each image will look differently on each paper so what i think will be the correct paper might actually be the wrong paper so the last round of test prints i will always print on the paper i intend to enter that image in that, that answered uh, Tracy's question, um, who's just asked us uh, what paper should we do our test prints on, so I think you've just covered that for her. I'm um, just going to say I'm really, really proud we're making history for the Institute today. We've got 64 people online uh, hey! watching us across, across Facebook and across Zoom at the moment, so I'm really, really Fantastic. proud of everyone that's tuning in. Um, manir has got a quick question, and his question is, is it okay to use models for pictures rather than real brides and grooms, for example? Uh, in the wedding category, absolutely not. Wedding categories have to be a real bride and a real groom register signed on the day of the wedding. Um, if you want to put in non-commission or you want to put in uh, for portrait, absolutely, I can't see a problem with models. The only thing we say not to do is enter any images from models that have been taken on workshops. So that is an absolute big no-no as far as I'm concerned. So if you've got models and you want to enter images, yeah, I know that, uh, I can't speak for the Institute yet. We haven't really sorted that one out. I know the SWPP, they have a wedding fashion category and models are absolutely fine for that category. And Jane just says, I love that we're doing an online meeting. Thank you for, for taking part. It's the first meeting I've ever done in my pants. Oh, I'm not really. I'm honest, you're not. It's, it's, <laughs> I won't stand up yet. <laughs> ne next question we got comes from Ross McKelvey. Uh, he says, for a dark image, surely you would not use a fine art paper? Uh, that depends on the image, I would say. It depends. This is why you test print. So if you've got a dark image, I would, I would get test prints across four or five different paper stocks because what, what one might look so dark on one will look okay on the other. So again, it's, but it's not for us to determine your vision. It's for you to, you know, to give us what you want to try and you know, put across. So my, I would just say get your test prints done on a few different paper stocks and find the one that works best for you. Fantastic. Michael Weeks has come in and said, so he's got enough prints now. Um, what, would, what do you do about mounting? Whereabouts do you get your mounts from and how do you go about that part of uh, your, your print, prep, prim, print preparation? There we go. How many, how many beers you had, mate? Uh, it's uh, no. So certainly I know uh, Graphic Studio did a, an offer this year for the national competition where they printed and mounted the images for 20 by 16. Um, obviously, for a, for a print competition, we ask for 20 by 16. Um, the print can be any size, as long as it's uh, the shortest dist length is 10 inches on the longest edge. So as long as you've got that, that's absolutely fine. You can print full bleed if you wish. It's not a problem at all. Personally, I think a 12 by 8 or a 10 by 10 or 11 by 11 works perfectly fine. But don't forget, guys, we judge the entire 20 by 16 so if you are you've got a 12 by 8 print in there or, or a 12 by 5 and you've got a dirty great thumbprint on the mount we will mark it down because it is a 20 by 16 competition and we judge the entire print area fantastic martin baines says where is your indoor scarf <laughs> I 
had to ask that to the boss at the end of the day, didn't he? But uh... yeah, tell him I've got. If you can see it, I've got it on now. I've got it on now. Tell him it's uh, one for my. Yeah, he, 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 he should be laughing for this. Um, so. <laughs> back, back to the serious business. Um, it says uh, uh, there's a quick message here from. Uh, Steve uh, Steve smiles and it says I haven't entered many competitions myself so forgive me if it's not relevant but do you submit a subscription for the photo and do you have any tips for those or for titles for images or how to title images uh, titling images has never been a strong point for me um, I a, a, a good title can lift an image but it can also hurt an image as well um, so you want to be really thinking about that if, if you're struggling for a title and you don't think the image needs a title to help tell the story and convey the message, then I would personally leave it out. If you are, you know, you think the judges might not get it, like a good, a great example was Christina Lauder a couple of years ago in the SWPP print comp, uh, print comp. She had an image that was in the finals and there was no, it, it was a great image, but we needed the title because it was called Transitioning and it was a picture of a, of a um, uh, I forget which way around it was, so forgive me, a girl transitioning to a, to a boy. So the image on its own was quite powerful, but it's literally that title lifted that image up way more because we understood what was going on in that image. So as I said, a good title can really, really help, but it can also really, really hurt. Fantastic. Next, uh, next question comes in from Michael Weeks again. It says, should a panel be si printed on a single style of paper? So if you're putting in for qualification, should all of my 20 images be on a, the same type of paper? Uh, I would say yes on that because a panel of images is, is yes, it is 20 individual images, but it should sit together as one complete body of work. So my advice would always be find the right paper stock and print every image on the same paper stock. Sarah Mace next comes back to us and says, uh, if you're printing from home for competition, uh, what would your recommended paper be? Uh, as I said before, um, you know, the Hannah Muller fine art photo rag has always been a personal favorite of mine. I've never printed at home personally. We you know we had a long haired German shepherd. So the thought of getting his hairs in the printer hedge was an absolute nightmare. So I'd always send it off. Um, but it's really about finding the right paper stock for the image. Now, uh, now a wedding image, I would, I would say would look good on Hannah Muller fine art photo rag but a landscape probably wouldn't. So a landscape, you might want to go for a metallic or a gloss or, you know, a bit more of a smoother finish. So it's really about finding the right paper stock for the correct, for the right image. And I think that's answered Les Cornwall's uh, question, which was about landscape images and the best papers that suit them. So you think something that gives a little bit of a, a unique style to landscape images. like a, Yeah, a bit like more of a punch. I mean, yeah, I entered a, uh, a landscape in this year's, uh, this year's awards and it was the only paper that was different from everything else because it was a different subject. So again, just try, it's just trying to find the right paper for the right image. Uh, Tracy asks us a question uh, about the BIPP and she says, there's a pound in the pot. Um, <laughs> are there any services available for mentoring uh, towards the competitions? Generally, the Institute's mentoring programs are towards qualifications, um, but that's a great way to use the regional meetings to attend in person to get some feedback. Uh, and I think both you and I have done that a fair bit over the years. Use the regional uh, meetings. I mean, if this was uh, obviously at um, the print foundry, I would have asked people to bring prints in uh, rather than going through them uh, digitally on here. And I would have given a critique there and then, but there's no reason why when you're submitting for a mentor me uh, within the, within the Institute that you can't just put a random 20 in because you want to put me in for the competition, you know, just, just mark it for, this isn't for qualification. I want some help for my competition awards. Can anyone give me a hand? There's no reason why we can't do that. I don't think. Fantastic. Well, that looks like it's all the questions, Scott. Should we move through to the, the next interesting part of uh, the evening? We're, we're going to have a look at some uh, some work that's been submitted by members for us to have a have a chat about. Yeah, I'm going to take my scarf off now. Matt. <laughs> right. Do you want to pull this down off of Dropbox or do you want me to um, see what works best for you, mate? Um, if you want to pull it down, mate, because I don't think my Dropbox is connected on this one yet. So if you've got it there, is it too late? I've just seen from Ian. Uh, I don't. Th is it too late, Jamie, for someone to send a print in? Oh, uh, go on, ping them over to me, Ian. Uh, Jamie at bipp dot com, um, and I shall add them in. What I'd let you do is give us a. So this year's print competition would normally start 
the regionals would normally start in April time, we'd, we'd start the, the call for entries. So while Ian puts some pictures together and pings them over to me, um, what would you like to say about preparation for this year? What, what advice would you give to people? Um, we, were, we were saying personally earlier that, you know, if we're shooting less for the next couple of months, uh, we might have some problems with our traditional work, but it might give us an opportunity to be a bit more creative with trying some different categories. Yeah, just shoot a project. I mean, I'm a great believer in personal projects. You know, I'm not shooting any weddings now for, you know, it could be two months, could be three months. And I've got itchy trigger fingers. So I need to go and keep my mind active. So I'll photograph the kids. I'll take a walk and photograph some landscapes. I'll go and do some street photography. Well, there's not much happening on the streets at the minute. But it's, it's uh, you know, just try and think of something different. You know, try and challenge yourself and just look for, look for what you're doing and a different avenue. It's and just really, really try and be different. I mean, my, my second fellowship was was at Auschwitz, and that's not that's totally different from from what I shoot. Uh, but I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to shoot on film, so you can still buy. If any of you got a film camera, go and shoot some film. Just try and get back to the old ways of doing things, and try and see if you, you know if you can without being patronised, and see if you can if you can do it the old fashioned way. Like you know, I'm old enough to do a shot film the first time round. I know Martin Baines definitely is. So it's you know it's uh, it's go and challenge yourself. Go and buy a cheap film camera. Was that you pinging on me? Um, that was you, I think. What is the rules for re-entering? I think. Well, hang on, what's uh, no uh from a, again i've just seen that question from Catherine while you're doing that uh, what are the rules for re-entering an image can i enter a print for regionals that has been entered for nationals uh, the answer to that would be no if it's already been judged then you cannot enter it i fell foul a couple of years ago in the institute uh the old nationals about three years ago because one of my images had merited in a different competition and therefore my entire panel was disqualified which is very very annoying so if it's been entered into anything and merited then you cannot re-enter and i think the important thing about that is actually we, we want to both as an institute and both and as a photographer we want to get the, the best out of the publicity of uh, of winning an award or getting a merit or a bronze or silver or gold and if we've if we've already kind of used those options up in another association or another institute from a business point of view, we're not, we're not getting the best out of uh, of the awards and uh, and impact is key. So again, for me, impact and now if I've seen the image, so one of my images, you know, did quite well at WPPI, and then I entered it into the nationals here, but it's been seen. The impact has been lost. So it no, it scored a bronze. I'm very happy to get a bronze, but you know, I can't expect it to go on if you're going to keep entering the same image for you no know, for a couple of years then it's going to lose all impact and it, the wow factor is going to be gone and therefore it will be, you know, marked accordingly. Right. I'm just waiting for, just waiting for Ian. Let me unmute That's you. Right. Come, on, come on, Ian. What was your excuse? Yeah, no, no. Jamie at where? At BIPP.com. Jamie. Okay. Jamie at BIPP. I've no idea if it's the right resolution. I've got it on my iPad next to me. That's Hold fine. On. That's a very nice print of Venice you got behind your your right shoulder, sir. I quite like that. It looked like <laughs> quite a that one. <laughs> no, no, this is a, my my travel wall behind me. There you go. So. That's incredible. Thank you. Uh, right. All right. So that that last minute rush, quite a few people have popped a popped a print in in those last uh, minute or two. So give <laughs> give me just a moment. That's all right. Yeah, with the BIP, we can consider using Zoom to watch live judging in the future. That's actually a very good point. I think, you know, I think if anything, this situation we're in is going to change completely the way we have meetings, the way we do a lot of things. Um, what we did at SWPP this year was actually project the images onto a big screen, which was really important for people at the back to see. Um, and I think maybe that's a discussion we have to have down the line when I get to meet with Martin and Eric and the rest of the powers that be up at the Institute head office. Um, but I'm all for getting things online and opening up to more people. Um, because I think one of the things in the past, it was very much a closed, a closed, um, thing. And I think we have to be completely transparent and I think it's important that we can do a lot of things online and include more people. So I'm all up for that, mate. I think one of the things for me is that we've, we've got, uh, 
technology is less of a boundary nowadays. We don't need tons and tons of equipment and live broadcast equipment to to, uh, to get some of these things online now. You know, there's there's quite a lot of kit that some of us have have got hands on. So it's there's less of a be- less of a barrier to entry than there was maybe ten years ago. I agree. No, I totally agree, mate. Right, I've got Ian's print, so I'm going to share my screen it. screen with you guys now. So I'm seeing these prints for the first time, guys. So the, I'm I'm looking at them the same time as you, and it's you know I'm not here to, um, you know, hurt anyone. I'm just here to you know bit of, a bit of creative, uh, creative criticism. Let me I put my teeth in, um, and if anyone you know can can this is this this is what we'd be like live print judging at, at convention. So I will go into it as if we're a convention. Right, let's fire away with the first image. Oh, we have a gorgeous image here of a little, um, I'm assuming it's uh, maybe a first communion. Um, you can tell, you know, she's of the age where that might, be, might, that might happen. Got some gorgeous lighting uh, here. What I would be conscious about there is maybe bringing the uh, subject's body further forwards. The reason I say that is because her hands are looking almost the same size as her face. So by bringing her uh, body, leaning her towards camera ever so slightly more, and maybe bringing her hands back off her knees and more into her thighs, uh, one, you're going to make the hands look a little bit smaller, and two, you're going to create a bit more separation between the body. Um, but beautifully processed. Um, I think it may be toned down the, the face some more. It looks a little muddy on my screen. So maybe there's been some highlight issues there that have been trying to dodge and burn and drag down the highlights. So just maybe think about you know, getting the highlights uh, more um, correct in camera. And also think about what I said earlier, the, the brightest point of the image, the center of interest. Is it her face or is it the, her chest on the bottom of her, of her dress there? And also be careful of any uh, S, um, center marks. It's like you've got a, dirt, um, a blob on her dress that could be in camera and that could be actually a stain on her dress. So again, things like that, I would think about that, but a great image overall. And again, this, this would score for me, this would be in the in the high seventies, good, consistent professional practice and side level work. So well done. Fantastic. Let's move on to the next one. I wish I was that skinny. That's uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's just a good portrait. Obviously I'm assuming again, we can never, we can never assume, um, but I'm assuming this is, he's a lead singer of a band and this is good on a, for an album cover. Very, very good. Uh, strong, strong pose in there. Strong connection between the, the author and the subject there. Again, look at the brightest point of the image. My eyes are going, oh, not too far. Sorry. It is his left shoulder where that light has just caught the left shoulder there, which is a little bit brighter than his face. Also tone down his body ever so slightly and bring his face up a little bit more. Also, what I'm seeing here, which again, it could be resolution. So if it is, I apologize. You've got a little halo around the back of his hair there. So just be careful of any haloing there, any dodging and burning. And the black point on his hair, um, that is probably going to be down to about one or two on the on the curve in Photoshop. But a good black and white conversion. Love the energy from coming from the author. Um, he's going to be really happy with that, and which, which is the main thing. Well done. Let's move on. Moving on, uh, yeah, again, a nice portrait, nice connection with the, the subject there. Again, I always kind of question the reason for cutting fingers and arms off. Uh, I would like to have seen the hands in this image a little bit more. Um, she's got a great smile, but look at the highlights on her hair there, either side of her mouth. I would have cloned those out because, again, I'm looking at her eyes, but my eyes are being pulled away to the, to the brightest point of the, of the hair. And it looks like, again, there's been some skin softening here or some highlight recovery. So the skin, the skin tones are a little bit matted. So just be careful on that. Again, in print, that would, that would look out quite more. The reason why I'm thinking that is because you see the highlight on her left shoulder is still as bright as it was and it hasn't been toned down compared to her arms and her face which leads me to, again i'm looking for things that are, uh, that, look, look, that look odd within an image and that looks a little bit odd to me so if you're going to go to the the trouble of toning an image down like that make sure you're doing all of it and don't leave anything else for judges to kind of question there's a couple of dust spots on this image as well and uh, i think that's a really important thing to point out to photographers is making sure your kit's clean and and picking up on those little fine details as well when we're putting in for for competition a lot of the test prints you'll see are dust spots you won't notice in um 
in uh, on the screen. It's not until you get the test print done that you will uh, you'll notice a dust spot, really. So here, what we have here is, I'm assuming, if that's a bride on a wedding day, what a dress. That's really, really cool. It could be a fashion shoot. It could be a bride. Again, we, we're not going to assume. Uh, great positioning within the frame there uh what's what's drawn holding it back for me a little bit is the blacks look very very matted on her hair on her on her chest piece and on her arms i'd like to see a little bit more contrast in that image now again this could be the resolution coming through here so again if it, if it is intolerance and then, then that's a good thing but it looks a little flat overall and again my eyes being pulled away to the right hand side or where the light's coming in so maybe a tighter crop on the right hand side there but if you bring the, the cropper on the right hand side, the subject would be then be looking out of the frame, which is always kind of, it's a bit of a gray area. It doesn't bother me as much. Uh, good hand position. I love the, the, the hand position of her right hand. But again, the brightest point of this image is the, the back side of her left, uh, her left hand there. So I just control that a little better in from there. And again, looking back, um, you've got some marks on the left hand side in the mirror. Now I would just would have taken a, uh, uh, a bit more attention detail when it comes to that. But, you know, she's going to love this print. Her, her expression is fantastic. One second, mate. Let me... Nice lens choice. A good shooting, good, nice low angle on the, on the capture. Very, very nice there. I think the good depth of field, good choice of f-stop. Overall, I think the posing is a little flat-footed. I'd like to see a little bit more shape in the bride. Hand position of the bride is lovely. I'd have brought the groom's hand down a little bit because you can see where the badges are on his right arm. The suit is starting to pull. Just by bringing his hand more off the back of the bride and more onto the top of her hip, it would help loosen that jacket a little bit more. Um, and also the bride's hand, we see where the, the forearm is, the shadow there. Just by bringing her arm down a little bit more would help alleviate that shadow. But overall, I quite like the, the tone of this. And think about distracting elements. By turning this print upside down, you'll notice all the highlights in the trees in the background. So just clone those out. And it's a very strong image. Well done. On to the next one. That's a cool shot. Very, very cool shot. I like that a lot. Nicely lit. You've got you know, many different lights here. Um, I'm assuming it's going to light this image up from there. Again, be careful of the highlights. You've got a little hot spot under the bright, uh, under the, uh, the subject's left cheek. And also, you've got some highlights on the dress on the side where her rib cage meets her stomach. So just be very careful of highlight control there. Maybe you just slightly feather the lights some more or use some grids just to help control that. And also, there's a lot going on here as well my, my eyes are being pulled all over the place so just tone the highlights down on the chrome work and again just by tidying up the background a little bit more would have really helped this image but again if she's a biker chick she is going to adore this i want to see more of the tattoos as well i mean i'm intrigued by the tattoos so um but no nice nice capture very very well done just watch the highlights It's very similar to the shot that I did. Very nice positioned. I quite like that. Um, again, uh, there looks like it's been some skin work here. The skin tones look a little bit matted on my screen. So maybe just tone that back just a little bit. Position on the bride is fantastic. I love the, the tonality of this image a lot. It's very, very nicely done. But for me, it's very flat footed. She's just kind of standing there, hands on her hips. It's a very, very safe pose. I would like to see a bit more elegance in the pose here, a little bit more refinement in the body position and the feet, just to open up, up a little bit more and put a little bit more emphasis on. It's a very masculine pose for a very feminine bride. Um, she's got a great headpiece on there. And also be careful of the um, eyelashes on the right-hand side as well. It's hard to you know, get rid of but just be very careful on putting a very masculine pose onto a, onto a bride. You know, it's, it can work in some cases. I would much prefer to have seen a, um, a more uh, refined pose for the bride here. Gorgeous. Let me just see, because I've got my chat box at the bottom. So is the bottom of the image, uh, the feet cut off? Is, I've got the chat I, box I here. I can't see the chat box at the moment, Scott. And I know there's a couple of people who pinged something into the chat. Um, can you just okay, check? No, that it's not, no, it's fine. It's just, it's just obviously for my screen here, they've cut the feet and the bottom of the dress off, no, uh, no, which is all there. 
Okay, perfect. That's fine. So again, a gorgeous capture at sunset. Um, very, very nicely done with off-camera flash there to match the tone of the, the flash coming into the sunset. Uh, but again, much like the image before, very flat-footed, a much more refined pose here would have done would have, would have done really, really well. I think just a, she looks a bit tense in the shoulders and he's got a bit of a hunch on. Just get him to stand a bit taller. But having said that, what you've done here is to try and bring their heads within the triangle at the back, which is what I really like about this image. You've thought about the positioning of the heads here, but just try and maybe, maybe change your angle a little bit to try and make the couple stand a little bit straighter. Also things like the flagpoles and the drain pipes and the ladder on the right hand side, I would have personally have taken those out because again, they're just pulling my attention away from the subject here. But having said that, to set this up on a wedding day uh, with the off camera flash and not to burn the sky out is very, very well done. You should be very happy with that. Happy with that, right. Great connection. Really good, really good tone here. I love the uh, the chap at the back. He's he's fantastic. He's he's living that moment there. Absolutely brilliant shot. Uh, the tone is lovely. I love the positioning of the couple. But what again? What's drawing me away is that concrete bucket. Is it a bucket or is it a uh, stonework on the right hand side? That if that was taken out or you just cropped it in just a little bit more, if you can see my hand here, I'm just kind of cropping out with my hand, the right hand side of the image, that would have been a lot stronger. You've got a great connection here between the couple. I really wish that was a bit more of a square crop into, into here. And also uh, the chap on the right, his cuff coming through around the back is just drawing my eye away from the emotion between the two faces. I would have cloned that one out to bring my eyes straight into the couple here. So I'm not dancing around the image as much, but a very, very great, very, very, very um, great, greatly caught image here. Well done. Scott, there's uh, four bits in the chat room. I can't see that while I've got this on full screen. Could you just uh, check we've not I missed anything? Uh, I can't hear this. Available to view later. Yes, it will be on. I'm assuming you'll post it on the group later on. Yeah, and Jamie. it'll be on our, our YouTube channel as well. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so that's fine for me. Uh, Quality is very poor. Okay, your hair. Uh, your hair, oh, it's Derek. It might be long by the end of this quarantine. It might be. Um, unfortunately, Mother Nature's taken care of that. And then uh, Erskine has gone, thanks for the informative session. So you're very, very welcome. All right, we'll move on to the next, next image, one. Next one, mate. This is my fault. This is a bit of a low res image. So uh, uh, my apologies for the. Uh, that's all right. So we here. can obviously we can see it's uh, Peter. Peter, thanks for submitting, mate. What a great location. Really well done on getting the dress very nicely placed um, on the bottom there and the positioning of the couple within the, um, excuse me, within the staircase is, is very nice. What I'm seeing too much more is of that, is that banister rail at the bottom to the left of where your, um, your logo is. I wish you cropped up a little bit more. So we just cut all of that out. So more of a letterbox crop in here or just angle the camera up a little bit more. So that light, the chandelier is in the center of the image. So also what you've got here, you've got a, um, a tungsten light with an off camera flash, maybe an orange gel on the flash would have helped match the color tone of the light to the dress. And therefore it would have, you know, it would have been, a, it would have sat a lot better for me. Also, we think about hands because she looks, you no, know, the hand positioning of the bride where they're tucked into the groom. It looks like she's just got stumps for arms. So just again, be a bit more refined um, on that. And that would have, no, but a greatly well done on this, on this location. I would have shoot here personally myself, but the fact you've got the dress nicely laid out should be commended. Well done, mate. Cracking image. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, wow. Love this. Great use of foreground and background depth of field. Beautiful image. The tonality is wonderful. Even though you've got hot spots on here, I am going straight into the bride and groom here. What I would have, what would help this image would have been a slightly more relaxed shoulder of the bride. She looks a little tense on the left hand side just by kind of tightening her lap muscle down a little bit more or dropping the bouquet down as a touch that would have helped relax her shoulder. 
I wish the groom was looking into, I wish they were kind of looking into each other. But again, the reason you've taken this image, they're obviously looking off at something. It's a great image. The tone is, is fantastic. The one thing that I would have done to make this jump even higher would be photoshopping out the bench, coming out the back of the bride. But apart from that, very, very nice capture. Well done. Nice portrait. The guy has worked very, very hard for the last four years and the graduation pictures goes, this, this, is, this is pretty good. Um, again, great connection with the, the subject there. What I would have done, again, to help lift this image even further would have been the brought the, would have been to have brought the lights round from from 45 degrees to make no for 90 degrees to 45 because the catch lights are just too far on the outside of the eye and the the inner part with the bridge of the nose is this is a little bit too dark so maybe a reflector or a little kicker in there would have really helped this image he's gonna love that but again from a technical judging point of view i'd like to send a little bit more light in the eyes Nice image. Love that. Very, very good. Very, very hard to get three sisters to sit there without scobbling, I would think. That's a very nice control done from there. It's a very safe shot, I would say. It's a very saleable image. Again, this would score in the 70s in, in, in print competition. A good, saleable work consistent with, with professional practice. I would like to have seen uh, either go on the outside their their right and left hands respectively and again just relax the body position just they look a little tense in the shoulders you've got a great expression from the girl in the middle i wish the other two were, was, was going to match that with a bit more of a giggle there or everyone has the same expression and that would have that, that, that would have gone um higher up for me but a good capture mum and dad will probably have probably got that on the wall so well done great image her, wow, look at that little toddler. That is that is a, a brilliant, brilliantly done. Even if that's been composited to get the face in there, if that's all done in one capture, bravo. That is not easy to do. That is a great expression for both. Thing you want to watch out here is just that left hand of the of the little girl at the back. It's just a little bit too extended. Just relax it a little bit more. Bring the thumb up, relax the fingers. But straight away, it's a great, great capture. Nicely lit, nice tones in from here. My eyes aren't dancing around too much. Even with the, the fence in, in the, the background there, I'm not being pulled away enough uh, from the subject there. It's very, very nicely done. Well done. A nice image of a dog. It looks a little off in composition. I would have personally liked to have seen that left-hand side cropped in a little bit more, a little bit more light in the eyes there. I think overall the image looks a little bit green, cyan, but again, that just could be the, the stream coming through, and it's a little flat overall. So just lift the contrast a little bit, get a test print done, pump some red, pump some, uh, pump some magenta in there just to warm it up a little bit, and it's a great, oh, it's a great image from there. Oh, that's all right. And then just look at the brightest point in the image is the dog's chest, uh, the white spot there. So just tone that down, lift the eyes up, and that would have elevated a lot more. But well done for getting dog to sit so still. Can I get you just to feel for a minute for me, mate? To feel? Yep. I just need you I to... I can uh... feel. I've, I've got a couple of questions in here. So uh, let's have a look. Quality is very good here. Might be the internet. Okay, so we've got some streaming issues going on here if you can watch face okay yeah so yeah obviously we're very much relying on um the internet at the minute so okay. if Everyone it is it. ever support yeah but we are recording this so when jamie when we're finished here we will be uploading the, the, the high res quality video of this on the social channels later on so if you do have low quality um streaming on buffering at the minute rest assured you'll be able to watch the the full high res version once it's posted online later i'm just adding a couple of images Ian, I've got a couple of people that are sending us extra pictures. Fantastic. And a couple of people that have logged out and they're coming back in. Good stuff. Tracy's there looking bored. Hello, Tracy. How are you? <laughs> I'm flicking through and seeing who's there. <laughs> Hats off go to Matt. Matt was uh, swaddling the baby to sleep in the in the background, rocking it to sleep. Oh, really? Today, I, see, yeah. I, I, can only see the, I can only see webcams now. So um, thankfully, everyone's got their clothes on. So that's a good start. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mike Payne's got his camera off, so I'm assuming he's sitting there in just a pair of pants, but that sounds a bit like Mike, so. Uh... <laughs> One second. Just 
going to hydrate. Won't be a second, mate. That's all right. Cheeky beer. You just know that everyone wants to. Everyone wants to get involved today, which is fantastic. It's great. I mean, are we still on sixty? We're in the sixty still, or are we? Uh... Yeah, we're we're still at sixty two. So we're we're fantastic. A great night. That's good. This is this is the nuts and bolts of the whole night, guys. The print the the print critique there. Hopefully, you've you've all learned you know something again without being patronising about what we're looking for from judges' point of view. And hopefully, that when I've explained the the critique on the image, you've gone, oh yeah, I didn't see that. And that's the secret. When you can start to see things in other people's images, you'll start to see it in your own. It's very very. This is a really good learning process, guys. Where would I get one of those Britney headsets Jamie is wearing? <laughs> uh, I've got a fantastic mic and mixer like you have. I'll just, uh, uh, this is a little bit easier. You don't hear my family in the background, so. Uh, no, no. Right. Let's, uh, let's get back into it. I'm just let's waiting. We've got, we got one other guy that's uh, just uh, dropboxing us some stuff. And I was just waiting for that to come in, but uh, we'll get back, to, get back to where we were and we'll add uh, mics in at the end. Perfect. Right. Perfect. I've just had a quick question from Tracy pop up. Yeah, it's hard. It's you so it's so easy to get invested in your own work. Tracy, you know me very well. Just send me some stuff through, girl. You know, I'll be honest with you. And I think you've got legs. I'll tell it. And if not, I'll just say maybe think about something else. Um, I'm, I'm, we're, we're all here to help. Uh, for, uh, as fellows of the Institute, we, we have a, a service to give back to the Institute. Um, and, I, you know, I'm more than happy to help anyone with competition. I'm not entering competitions anymore. Um, so if I can be of any help to help you as members to, you know, lift and elevate your own work to get success, I'm happy to go through images, guys. So please send them through. Right, I, I don't know how far we got with this one, so you might have to. Oh, that, that that one we have done. That cool. one we did. So let's have a look at the next one. Very nice image, wedding day. I'm presuming. So well done for getting the couple um, out. I like the leading lines coming away from the bride and groom there. But as you can see from the groom's perspective, he's not quite as into the bride as I'd like her, him to be. Maybe just square the hips up a little bit more, and maybe a little bit more connection there. Hand on the hand on the waist, hand on the forearm, just standing there and having a kiss. Uh, is you know it's good connection, but I, I want to see a little bit more. Um, the umbrella is. I'm questioning the, the use of the umbrella. Is it raining or is it just there as a prop? Again, think about the concept, guys. If it's absolutely hammering down of rain, then get an umbrella out. But if it, you've got an umbrella there, I want to see a really good reason why it's there, not just for the sake of it, just for having an. an oh, February and raining. Okay, perfect. That's good. So maybe think about backlighting the image from here so we can see some of that rain so we can really kind of see and you're selling the story so maybe shoot the flash off from the back rather than the front light that rain from the back get a black background in from there and that will really help sell it a little bit more and also little things as, as we said before the little bit of writing in the window just try and clone stuff like that out but again, maybe think about this is a very safe shot. I would say that shooting weddings, if you've heard me before, is like trying to feed my six-year-old. It's very hard to get them to eat peas and carrots because but we know they're good for good for people. This is what I would call a peas and carrots shot. Good, saleable work. Once you get the safe shot in the bag, then start playing around for competition work. Have chocolate pudding. Chocolate pudding is bad for you, but it's very, very good for you as well. I enjoy it much more than peas and carrots. So get this shot in the bag. Then say, guys, can I just have five more minutes? A couple more minutes more? And then play around with your lighting. Try and do something a bit different. This is a great shot, saleable work, but for competition, try and think of something a little bit more kind of out the box. But no, the, the, the couple are going to love it. So well done, mate. Oh, cool. Great street image. Wow, it's nice to see a different uh, different image. Great use of focal length here. The, the use of the length here, I'm assuming it may be a 90 mil, 135 or a 200. I love the compression. I'm assuming it's New York. Um, I, I can't see anything to tell me that isn't New York, apart from the yellow taxi that could be anywhere. But it's got a great story here. I'm looking, my eyes are all over the place. This is an image where... I'm not so fussed about highlights. I, as an author, you want to, you know, I'm looking for stories. I'm looking for individual stories. I think it's a great tone. I love the fact that your eyes being drawn all the way down Fifth, uh, Fifth Avenue, I'm, I'm assuming. 
and all the stories and the taxis and the people on the street and the buzz of the city. It's a really, really great image. It's a strong image. I like it. Maybe a little bit more contrast here would have just helped just make it pop just that ever so slightly more. Um, but a good, good image. Very well done. Black and white, I think here would have been quite nice. So think about black and white as well, guys. Don't just think because it's come out of the camera color to enter it in color. I think black and white here would have helped a little, and a bit more contrast would have put this image up into the next score category, but well done. Good image. I like it a lot. That's a nice sharp image. Nice sharp image of a, of a duck. Uh, my eyes going straight into the forehead there. Good catch light. It's natural light. I can see from the catch light in the eye. There's no studio light in here whatsoever. Um, one thing I will say is post-production. Maybe it's taken on um, a low-res camera because to look into the bottom right-hand corner of the image where the straw is, it's breaking up ever so slightly, which leads me to believe it might have been taken on an iPhone in portrait mode. And you've just kind of played around with the the setting, the, the post production on on the iPhone from there. If it hasn't, you've cut it out. You've done a good job of cutting it out around the duck, but then just be paying more attention to the the straw there because that's what my eyes go into there. I'm, I'm looking around, but as I'm looking at the image more constructively, I'm now looking. I'm now starting to find things that uh, you know that could, that could be improved moving forward. So be very careful if you're cutting stuff out, guys. Make sure it's absolutely perfect. Very cool image. So straight away, I'm thinking this is a uh, a styled shoot. I love the positioning of the subjects within the arches from there. But again, what I've said in the keynote, maybe think about straightening up the squares, straightening up the, the verticals. The horizons look straight to me, but the verticals look a little bit off. So just by playing with the stalk in Photoshop, you can just help lift that up a little bit more. Overall, I think it's a little flat in contrast a bit more contrast would have really really helped and also the uh, the model on the very left she's got a nail missing um you can see she's got three nails there uh, long white ones and there's, there's a random one missing on her index finger so again i'll probably would have photoshopped something there in uh because again i'm looking for things i'm looking for things that stand out i'm looking at the individually uh, and that's kind of popped out and also the bro the model on the right hand side i would have photoshopped maybe that's that scarring out on her uh, left forearm there but good positioning good good thought out image a little flat overall so a bit more contrast and again a little bit more attention to detail here in the verticals and that would have jumped up a score category for sure fantastic same shape very cool it's nice to see it in color good positioning here uh lighting off camera flash is fantastic very very well done here um good pose good uh great tattoo work now i like that a lot uh for me what's holding this image back is the bride's right hand it looks a little bit kind of you know it looks a little bit weird i'm just placing all the fingers there on top of the wheel would have helped make a little bit more refined uh, and also, the big thing for me is if you're going to use a cloning brush, make sure you've, you've got the feather on, uh, not on zero, because you've looked to the left of the bride of uh, the subject's head, you can see a massive content aware mark there as well. So just be very, very careful in post production when it comes to things like that, because again, um, this would this would probably score in the low seventies uh, because of that cloning mark there. If this if it was cloned out properly and I, I didn't notice it, it, this would have scored in the mid to high 70s. So uh, it, again, it's attention to detail. So refinement in the hand position and be a lot more careful when it comes to post-production. It's a picture of a couple of cows. It's it's a good it's a good image. You know, you got some uh nice lighting on the cow there. It's it's a couple of cows. What more can I say? I think I like the fact you've kept the side of the barns in. Uh, so you've got some context there of where they are. But again, much like the image of the duck, uh, a couple of images back, we do have some issues with the cutting out at the bottom there. I'm noticing some bits that you know haven't been cut out as as nicely as I'd like them to be for a, for an image for a competition. So just look into the the cutting of the images out in from there. So just be very careful of that. But it's a nice picture of cows. 
I like this a lot straight away. It's a very different image. And uh, this could be a dad and a life portrait session. This could be a dad taking a picture of mum and baby. Uh, but I like it a lot. It's a different take on an image that we see so often. So bravo on, on thinking outside the box a little bit more. I lo would like to have seen a bit more highlight control on the right hand of the baby's uh, left hand cheek. Um, but it doesn't bother me that we can't see the eyes as much. I love the, the, the shallow use of depth of field here with mum on the left hand side. I maybe would have cropped in ever so slightly on the right hand side from there just to bring in my eyes being pulled away from the bright point of, of the mat or the rug or the floor there. Uh, so just crop in ever so slightly. But again, I, like, I actually like the tone of this as well. I think the tonality is very, very nice. Um, again, from a being a real nitpicky kind of view, I would have maybe photoshopped out mum's little finger poking out of uh, on the boy's left lap there. So just kind of little things like that I would have just taken away. But overall, a very, very very nice image well done this is every this is every house at the minute you know chaos you know kid with his shirt off younger brother chasing him the older ones winding him up the baby's just sitting there thinking what's happening what's going on i like the fact that you dragged the shutter on this just to convey this chaos um within the room there i like it a lot good use of black and white Again, just a little bit loose on the crop at the bottom there. Maybe just lift the crop up ever so slightly because I'm just being pulled away into the bottom there. Just by maybe you see where the, the bottom of the drawer is on the left-hand side and the top with that with it up the triangle, I would have cropped just there. I think so. My eyes, I'm not being pulled away from the image, but a very, very good use of a drag of the shutter there. Well done. I like that a lot. Good use of black and white too. Oh, isn't that cute? Good connection between the dog and the author there. Dog, it's very hard. I don't shoot pet portraits. I know, Jamie, you do. Um, you can you can probably say that it's a lot harder to try and get a dog to look down the, the, down the, the lens than what it is a child, but a good use of light. The lighting here is beautiful. The lighting here is very, very nice. You've got good lights, good catch lights. You know, you've got the kicker at the back there. Very, very nicely handled. I maybe would have cropped out the bottom of the trunk at the bottom because, again, distracting me ever so slightly are the buckles on the bottom right-hand corner. But overall, it's a very, very nice image and very nicely handled, so well done. Well done on that. It's another dog. It's another dog. It's beautiful. Good connection with the, I'm assuming the owner is just out of shot, which is where the dog's got its gaze. Um, this is probably a little bit too dark on the left-hand side. So again, just be very careful on lifting up the shadows on the overall image. And again, the vignette on the back is a little bit too hard. That could be a backdrop or the author has put um, a vignette on in post-production. So just be very careful. A good vignette, if you can't see it, it's done well. If you can see a vignette, it's, you, you've done it too much. Just, just tone back on the vignette ever so slightly and lift the blacks up ever, a little bit more there. And that'd have been a much stronger image, but well done on getting the dog to sit still. It's a nice shot. This is, uh, I'm assuming, in the boy's old girl, I can't really see, uh, in the nursery, looking, maybe peeking through the curtains. It's a really, really good image. Be careful of highlights on the chin there. Um, obviously, it's very hard to control the highlights. It's a very, very contrasty image, so it's hard to control the highlights there. And also, if you are doing a shot as a profile like this, always try and make sure the nose doesn't break the cheekbone. Um, it's you know it's one of the old-fashioned rules. The nose doesn't break the cheekbone or break the top of the lip because it can make the nose look a lot bigger. Uh, but a great capture. I like the fact you've got the rainbow in the background. Uh, again, from a judging perspective, I would have uh, cloned out the chocolate around the, the uh, around the little uh, person's mouth there but again a nice catch light in the left eye there too so well done attention very nice very nice tone on this i like that a lot good tone good blacks good highlight recovery very very nice tone there uh, it's a great dog portrait you know to get two dogs sitting there and get so close without them having a squabble with each other is very very nicely done what would i've done on this image to improve it there's some dark spots on the top right hand corner which i would have cloned out and again i'm just i'm looking for things now because I'm, because the image is so nicely handled i'm guessing it's natural light because you can see the window in the dog's eyes so it's a very nicely done 
um, image with natural light, but just be very, very careful of dust spots on your sensor. So just again, by turning this image upside down, you may have seen the dust spots a lot more than normal. So just be very aware of that, but a very nice capture, well done. Nice image. Very, very nice image. Good use of light, good pose. She's obviously, whether she's um, a professional model or if she's not, very nicely done. She's obviously very, very comfortable uh, with the author here in capture. I would have just toned down that right shoulder ever so slightly more because that is ever so slightly brighter than her face. So just be very wary of that just by bringing that down lifting up the face ever so slightly would have helped this image a lot more i like the fact that she, because she's pulling that jumper and sweater it, she's got a, a tight grip on her hands there but that doesn't bother me if i'm honest i like it a lot it's a good image uh, just be very careful of the highlights there on that on that part of the uh, of the jumper but very nicely done well done can you just check our messages again scott anything we've missed i, I can i can i can indeed uh we have lovely thanks scott february and raining east week's mess new york city cool um so helpful thank you always scared of a crop and never know what to do for it to be right that is on board and the chocolate i kept for my personal reason my daughter's the first day of homeschool fair enough self-commissioned yeah i mean i've got a little girl she does a hot chocolate and trying to get her clean face is an absolute nightmare uh but yes but for, for your reasons absolutely keep it in but from if you're going to enter things like acting competition then that's the kind of stuff that has to come out but uh, thank you for submitting appreciate it so we've got joe yates sarah toon and uh, janice wardle say hi and lee hathrell says he's in his pants especially for you personal, <laughs> personal note between the two of you there my friend <laughs> i i wouldn't expect anything less from lee Havrell. <laughs> right shall we move on on to our next image oh beautiful image straight away wow the impact here is absolutely gorgeous the pose in here is fantastic beautifully lit nicely controlled and i like the fact that you, you've got her in a triangular pose in a square box the good use of crop here this is a very very powerful image i'm i'm just my eyes dancing around everywhere i'm going from a face down to a hand from a right hand down to a to a left foot and they're back up to her face my eye is constantly dancing around here beautiful image i'd be up in the 80s in this for sure i like it's a, a, a tremendous amount this is a very very powerful image you should be very very proud um of this i wish i'd taken it myself i'm actually gutted i haven't taken it myself so uh, very very well done again from here I've, i can't see the bottom of the the image so i can only assume that the bottom is in the yeah. toes are cutting off I've got, I've got the chat bar here but uh very very powerful image mate very very well done whoever took this beautiful oh. I've got to say this this was one from the uh, the whole lot that was submitted that I'd be um, you know really stood out to me and I'd be quite happy to have this on the, the wall in my living room I think I would uh, yeah I mean I, I would expect the challenge um, on this I would definitely expect a challenge I would be in the mid 80s but I can someone that shoots this genre would probably be up even higher and then I would, I'd expect a good challenge on this print but this this is a very very strong image very very well done fantastic Again, another a very, very nice uh, nice nude. Uh, we all know uh, the model is quite a famous uh, fine art nude model. She, she's, you know, she's done uh, a lot of shoots for various different... And she, you know, Trevor and Faye Yerbury were very... Used her quite a bit. Beautiful image. I, again, I'm a believer in the image... Should, the the, the uh, subject should not look out of shot. I think this image would have benefited more if she was sitting in the centre of the couch or onto the right hand side of the couch because a subject looking out um, again, it just kind of, it, it doesn't sit as well with me as it would as she was sitting in the middle. Also be very careful of highlights on her face. And again, the left side of her hair looks a little brighter than her face. I would have toned that down a little bit more, but a good pose. Uh, again, be careful when you are when you are sitting so close and using a wide angle lens, the feet can look a lot bigger than they actually are. To be very mindful that her, her, her right foot especially is bigger than her face. So again, by having her lean more towards camera and maybe changing your stance and using a longer focal length uh, would have helped alleviate that, but a very nice capture. 
another dog, another natural light. I can only assume it's the same author as the, the previous two dogs there. It's a good image. Uh, I like the image a lot. Image is looking, uh, dog looking out of camera. Um, again, it looks a little soft on my uh, screen here. So maybe, maybe just think about shutter speed here or maybe using a wider aperture to let more light in. But again, the author uh, has done a really good job of capturing a dog portrait. But on the dog's right-hand shoulder, we have a little hot spot there. It looks like it's slightly burnt out. So just bring that back into tolerance and it will go even higher, but well done. Very nice. Oh, look at that dress. Wow, gorgeous dress. Absolutely stunning. She'll be over the moon with this image. Uh, nice placement of the bride in the window. I think, again, much like the previous images that we've seen in the wedding category or the wedding images we've seen, it's a little flat-footed. I'd like to see a little bit more shape within the bride here. And the hand is just, it doesn't look, like it's just, oh, just put your hand by your ear. It doesn't look like it's there for a, for a purpose. And what we have here is also over rotation of the eyes. She's looking out of the window and you're seeing more of the white of her eye than you are her actual iris and her pupil. So in that instance, I'd always say to the bride, now look where your nose is pointing and that will just straighten the eyes up in the, in the, in the skull and you'd get less of the white of the eyes. But the dress is, the detail of the dress is absolutely beautiful. If I was in a situation, I would have used that hotspot on the wall more. Uh, photographers in general, we're, we're quite scared of using direct harsh light. Um, I would have done this safe shot and done that for the, get the detail of the dressing. Then I would have played with the the harsh light in from coming in from the window. But as a capture, very very well done. Nice shot of a, a subject there. A little hot on the right side of the face. You've got some burnout there. It's a little bit too tight in the frame. Again, I'd like to see a bit more space and to see what we're looking through. It's just my eyes are all over the place with this image. Uh, I am going straight into the bride, but this is what we're talking about before. Her eye positioning here is perfect. You, her eyes are dead center in the skull. We haven't got too much over rotation, not too much white of the eyes. So if these eyes were on the previous image, it would have gone a lot better. So very well done on the author for getting the eyes right in in camera just control the highlights a little bit more nice capture i like the use of depth here um it's looking like some banisters or in a hotel or anything like that now we've all photographed in the holiday inn in basildon um so we know that sometimes uh location isn't always perfect and we have to make the very best of what we have this author has made the very best of what they have it's a very very good capture of a bride on the wedding day again maybe before she's leaving the hotel or the house it's a different shot it's not the safe shot we normally see it's tonality is quite nice i would like to see a little bit more catch lights in the eyes it looks like we've got some cloning just above her head there uh, we've got some dark shadows which i like to see, have seen gone but a very good capture and a very different type of image to what we normally see so very very well done for thinking outside the box what a staircase that looks really cool. Again, I think the location here is absolutely gorgeous. You've done really well to get the bride here. Uh, unfortunately, what's not helping the image here is looking straight up the bride's nose. Um, I can probably understand that you are using a wide angle lens here. Uh, it's quite tight to get everything in. So again, just by trying to correct the pose in camera, by correcting the ratio, by leaning her body all the way down to you, almost like her body's at a right angle and you would help alleviate uh, looking up her nose and again I want to see more of her face here the left hand is looking, looking a little bit lost good positioning on the right hand from there but again by bringing her body all the way down you'd help alleviate the the issue of looking up her nose but as for location goes well done that's a really cool spot you should if, if you're going back there again if you're shooting there again lean the body down towards you a little bit more What a cool, lo again, great location, same bride, I think. Same bride, really, really good, great location. I wish there was more connection here with the groom. The, the expressions on both, lovely. Her right shoulder's a little bit too tense. Just relaxing that shoulder more would really help. And again, just the groom putting his right arm on the bride's right forearm would help me believe this connection more between the couple. Good job of the getting the dress nice. 
but again, just try and straighten horizons. It looks a little bit like the, the, the whole building is leaning to one side. You just might just get everything straight in uh, in post production, but a good overall exposure. Great connection with the bride and groom there, but just to get try and get more connection by putting the bride's hand on the forearm there, and that would help you know, sell the story a little bit more. I know this venue. This is a venue very close to my heart. I shot here an awful lot. Um, and I've never seen this shot done before. I might nick this image uh, for next time I'm shooting here. When I'm back shooting weddings again, it'd be quite... Uh, but a very good shot there. I love the leading lines in from the banisters of the of the bridge there. The use of depth of field with the leaves. You're really selling... This is like a late September, October wedding. Very, very nice capture. Good connection between the bride and groom. Two things here that I would help to improve this image is one, I would bring the bride's nose forward because you want to see more of the bride's face and the groom. And also I would tuck the groom's thumb into the pocket. Looks a little bit weird having a thumb out. Um, I would personally have tucked that in. I want to see a little bit more cuff on his side as well. But a really, really good capture. A venue I know really, really well. And I've not seen this done before. So very, very well done. I love the use of leading lines in here. But well done, mate. Well done. Next image. Gorgeous sunset. Wow. Great tone here. Overall, you know, done a very good job. Is now, is now I can't see any artifact in here in the sky with the tones breaking up. It's a great image. I wish the couple with bodies were a little bit closer together. And again, like we said it before, very, very flat footed. Just try and get a little bit more shape within the couple from here. They're going to love this. This will be up on the wall. I guarantee you can make a fortune on wall art from this. Again, to help improve it, maybe a little bit more contrast and just Photoshop that sign out on the bottom left-hand side there. And again, my eyes being pulled away from the couple, bring the couple in a little bit closer, a little bit more movement in the feet and a little bit more contrast. And this would absolutely fly. Well done. This is where the umbrella works. Um, very, very good use of off-camera flash here, using the umbrella they're holding to bring it into context. You know, my the brightest point of the image is the umbrella, but I'm, I'm being drawn down into the couple. I'm assuming this is a football stadium or indoor uh, a concert hall or something like that. Very, very nicely done. I want to see, again, I want to see Barnet FC. Fantastic. Um, so we don't see the, the, uh, the, the black, um, the black uh, chairs there. But again, try and get the couple a little bit closer because the issue we have here is the stem of the umbrella. It's just cutting through the groom's nose there. So by bringing the head a little bit closer, you, you kind of alleviate that coming in from there. And also maybe a square crop here would have worked. There's a little bit too much dead space on the left-hand side. But this is where the umbrella works because you're using it to your advantage. So well done. Another venue is very close to my heart. I love the use of depth of field here. I love the use of uh, you, you, using the location to be drawing everything in. Again, if um, a, a, a judge that I know we all know well, if you can bend something, bend it, and the bride's arms are a little bit too straight here, just bring that bouquet up onto the hips ever so slightly, would bend that elbow ever so slightly, and that would make her look more feminine. And also just try and tuck that thumb in um, on the right hand side there but a good use of location I know the venue well but just tidy up the wall a little bit more if you can so you've got some hot spots there and try and tone down some of some of the dark spots but and that's a nice nice print well done excuse me that's all right how are we doing on, how many more have we got to go mate are we are we, uh, are we broken the back of it or are we uh, got yeah, loads more to go give me one second I'm just gonna that's uh, right. we're over halfway through perfect I think everyone's in everyone's thrilled with what they're uh, going through mate so uh, Good stuff. This is a great commercial portrait. She is going to love this. I like it a lot. I don't shoot commercial portraiture, but if I did, I would shoot it like this. Um, I think it's she be over the moon. Just be careful of her left hand competing with the face. And also, I'd have cropped in ever so slightly to get the chap in the background on the right-hand side out. Or that would be quite an easy clone to get rid of him there. But overall, it's a very, very strong commercial portrait. The author should be very, very proud of this. Well done. 
So this is what we're talking about when I said about artifacting. This is not banding. Um, so if you can see the tonality of the sky at the top, you can see it start to break up a little bit. This is what we call artifacting. This is where the JPEG just can't cope with the tone from the, the gradient from the white point to the dark point at the top. So this would have benefited to have been shot raw, converted to 16 bit TIFF and edit the TIFF and then print from the JPEG. So that's from the, from the print quality side of it. From a um, opposing side, the groom, I like the groom. Again, a little flat footed, good use of cuff there. Again, he's got his thumb in. The bride is a little square footed. I love the fact she's got a hip kicked out to the right hand side, but I want to see a bit more shape in her left leg. Uh, good use. Uh, well done on getting the um, the dress nicely done there. But just be careful of image control here, and be careful of the artifacting in the sky. But overall, well done. Oh, this is great. This is this is a a moment well captured on the wedding day. Completely candid, completely off the cuff. This, this, this is a photographer that is just waiting for that right moment to, to hit the shutter, and they've done that. This is a very, very nice image. I like it a lot. This is reportage at its absolute finest. Now, because we're judging, you know, looking at reportage, I'm not overly critical of the right hand coming through from the groom. This is all about the expression. This is all about her expression. He said something in her ear, a little reassuring kiss on the top of the head there. It's a great capture. Well done. Nice tone. Um, this is what we're saying about having making sure the nose doesn't break the cheekbone. If her head was turned around to the left ever so slightly more, it wouldn't, it would help with the uh, the nose here. Because because the nose is breaking the cheek, it accentuates the nose that we uh, that's on the bride there. So just be very very careful on that. And again, it's a, it's a tender moment from the between the bride and groom. The groom's kissing. Her expression is really really nice. But again, I want us to be sold it more by having the connection there at the front with the hands. Just by bring his hand in his pocket, I'm not buying his expression. Not buying him. I'm buying her a lot more than I'm buying him. And also be very careful on the top left of the arm of the bride is a lot brighter than, than, the, than the face. Just turn the, turn the arm down, bring the face up, and maybe just kind of cut in the right-hand side some more and get rid of that window on the right-hand side. But tonal the tonality of this, I like it a lot. Well done. Nice use of shooting through the veil, trying to get some depth in here. Um, what we have here is a very high contrast image with lots of hot spots and lots of dark spots. What would have helped here would have been turn their back to the sun and get a more consistent light across the face. Also, by having the hands so high up onto the groom's chest, you can see that her shoulder has really come up and competing with her face, bringing the hand down, bringing the shoulder down. And then she looks, she's happy, she's looking relaxed, but she's looking tense because her shoulder is so high up. Just bring the shoulders down, everyone. And that really helps bring the image up from there. But I like the, the, the thought process here to try and shoot you know, through the valve to create depth. I like it a lot. Just maybe turn the, head, the heads around and then shoot into the sun to get a more flat lighting, consistent lighting across the couple's face. But well done. Oh, very, I like this image a lot. This is uh, good positioning, really, really nice uh, connection between the couple. Again, the hands a little high on the on the bride's uh, the bride's left hand, and again, it's it's a bit it's it's the same size as her face. What I would have uh, liked to have seen here is the elbow or the heel of the bride's hand in the elbow on the bicep of the groom to take that hand away from the faces because I'm getting I'm just competing with the faces here from the hand. Tonality, I like it. the natural vignette of the uh, the sycamore tree here is is really really quite nice. I'd have toned down the the, the post on the right hand side and and taken out the um, the, um, the the board just to the left of that. Where the, obviously I'm assuming it's where the seating plan is. Um, so just things like that. But overall, it's a nice image. They're gonna love it. I can guarantee this, this will be up on the wall. So well done. Great shot. Same couple same venue uh very good connection between the bride and groom she's you can see here she's got shape in her body so shape here is fantastic i would like to have seen a bit more kind of uh, refinement in the, the the bride's left hand here it looks like she's gripping on too tightly just elegantly with the bride's fingertips here to really accentuate how 
feminine she can be, a good connection between the, the bride and groom. Uh, we've toned down the shirt a little bit on here. It looks a little bit muddy, so be careful on the white of the groom's collar and the shirt because you're looking at the bride here. Her, the white is white here, but the groom's shirt looks a little bit kind of matted. So just be very careful if you're going to tone down anything from there. Just, just, be, just don't take it too far on that, but a great shot. Well done. Very nice image. Good connection between the bride and the groom. This is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I like the connection here. It's great. The good use of black and white conversion. Nice, punchy, contrasty image. Again, I would love to have seen the, 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 the trees in the background toned down some more. Because if you can probably see, my eyes are going up between the couple. And I'm fighting now with the, the trees in the background. So just tone those down a little bit more. In fact, you could probably have taken them out. It's, it would have been easy to retouch to, to get rid of those three tree um, trunks in there. And also to the bottom left hand of the image, we've got some highlights on the grass. Just take those out as well. But the connection between the bride and groom here is beautiful. Again, the one thing I would have done to help make this go another score category, I probably would have taken out her three fingers around the back of his neck. But the good hand position on the left-hand side, their expressions are brilliant. Well done. I'm just trying to see. Yeah, obviously we, ha we have an assistant here that's kind of flicked up the uh, the veil. I'm just trying to look and see if I've got any any retouching or they are they probably flicked it and legged it off to the right hand side. So well done for not getting the the uh, assistant in from there. Well done. Um, I'm fighting with the uh, foreground a little bit on here, a little bit of a, a tighter crop from the bottom. We're still going to get it's in the cornfield. We're still going to get where you are. But I'm just I'm fighting too much with with the foreground here, and again we have some uh, some issues with, with, with the sky and the artifact in um, at the top there. Again, overstretching of the groom's arm, just kind of bring his body a little bit squarer. You can see the shirt's very tight on the back of his arm there. And again, this is the instance where the bride's not kept in with the groom as much. So again, by bringing the bride's left hand up onto the groom's right hand, again, a little bit more connection between the couple there would have helped this image a lot more. But again, well done on getting such a, on, on a different image. Good connection. Love her expression is fantastic. Again, you, a nice use of focal length, nice use of depth of field. Again, we've got a shooting through the water into the brighter than out again on a gorgeous um, late summer's day with the long grass in the background. My hay fever, we've been having an absolute nightmare taking this image. So well done for getting outside at this time of the year. Again, we've got a little bit of a highlight issue on the groom's forehead and on the left-hand side of the bride's face. And she looks like she's trying to force her eyes closed a little bit more. So it looks a little bit like, rather than saying close your eyes, she's trying to fight to keep them open. So it looks a little bit forced in the pose. And also I'm looking at the uh, the bride's uh, top of the dress. You can just see a little bit of tape just poking through from the top there. So again, little attention to detail guys here, little look at detail and just clone that out from there. But again, this is the shot they're gonna love. So you know, I'm, I'm not saying this isn't a good award, but this is a good saleable work consistent with professional practice. This will score in the mid seventies uh, for an image from there. So well done, just be attention to detail on this image. Whoa, <laughs> that's cool. Um, that is very close. I'm assuming we're on a fisheye uh, here the, so that you can almost see the author um, in the eye of the dog there with the camera and the lens, but a really, really cool image. I like it a lot. I can't really critique it. It's just a really different image. Uh, you've probably got um, the uh, partner uh, or or a child in the background with the with the dog licking probably the face of the author let's be honest it's probably having a good old lick of the ear from there but a very very different shot of a pet portrait very very well done nice street image good good black and white I wonder where that is. And it's quite cool. Obviously, we've got a little bit of a marching band going on here. I like the fact you kind of, you've used the, the people in the image, the, the tambourine man. Um, and then you've, you go into the girl with the drum, the woman with, with the cowbell, into the guy on the guitar, then back out to the guy on the left-hand side with the whistle and the drum. Good use of layering. Again, attention to detail. I would have got rid of the fire escape sign above the, the guitarist and the tissue on the floor just to the left um so you know just again just really trying to you know um, this is 
probably nitpicking, but it's these are the things that are going to help you go from a 79 to an 80. It's just by looking at things from a different perspective and just looking at things a bit differently and attention to detail. But this is a good, good port. It's a good street image. Well done. Can you just check our messages again, mate, before we move I on? I can. We've got nine. Oh, we've got nine. Uh, so we've got a beautiful nude. Well, I've got a t-shirt on now, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, Barney, uh, she loved it. Uh, thanks for the feedback on the three ladies. The Archie's photos comment, much appreciated. And definitely take on board the comments. Ah, Sarah, you're most welcome. Uh, Steve, yay, it was the owner in the background. Smiley face. Um, and it's a protester, uh, go, it's a protest going past a bunker. That's really cool. Nice, it's a nice capture. Really, really just attend. So, Steve, on that one, just take off the fire escape sign and the bit of tissue on the paper, and that would have come up a lot more. Fantastic. Let's carry on. Oh, this is cool. Oh, I like this a lot. This is a really good um, commercial image. Nicely lit, beautifully lit, in fact. Very hard to do. Uh, but you've done a very, very good job there. Um, obviously, uh, it looks like the Apple brand, but it, obviously it's... Um, how do you pronounce it? Savar? Sav Savage? I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Um, nice tone. Good use of red background. A good commercial image. Yeah, I can't see a thing wrong with that. You've got a little bit of a highlight on the left-hand side there. Um, this is something that's maybe like Sean Conboy um, would, would love because, again, he shoots a lot of commercial work, so he would probably go into a much better critique than what I could um, on this. But, again, using my skills as a judge, it's a good, consistent, professional practice with good, saleable work. So, so the, the client will love this. So, well done. Same, uh, same, same bit. This is again use of the apple in here as well. I'm fighting with the image a little bit more here because there's a lot more going on than a previous image. Um, this would have worked, I think, better maybe without the actual real apples in and again you've got that highlight just on the uh, the metal bit and if you're shooting metal make sure it's clean you can see like a, a mark a brass mark and a thumbprint on the top of the metal there so the last thing you do before you take this image is make sure everything is clean and spotless because uh, again cause for, that could be a nightmare to retouch so just make sure you kind of got a little lens cloth or something just to help clean anything like that off and that would really help but uh, it's a nice image well done it's a pot it's a nice image of a pot. It's uh, it's a beautiful shot. It's nicely lit. It's a little bit flat contrasty. I think it's breaking up ever so slightly at the bottom, uh, where you've got the black coming through and the shadow of the of the pot there. But again, if, if this is for uh, the potter, is that, is that the word? The potter or the glazer that's made this in uh, in Venice or wherever, they'd be thrilled. So uh, just be careful with depth of field. It's like you've, you've just missed a little bit. It's sharp in places and not in the others. So just be careful with depth of field. Maybe stop down to 5.6 or F8 if you're getting this close um, to make sure all of it is, uh, is sharp. But uh, yeah, it's a nice print. Well done. Oh, we have some commercial glazers. Again, nice image. I think it's a little bit tight in the frame, personally. I like to have seen a little bit looser on the frame. And again, it's not looking at its absolute sharpest on this stream here. If it is if it is sharp, I apologize. Uh, but again, just be very careful with, with, with your f-stop here. Maybe start shooting you know, down at, say, 5.6 or f8, as I said before, to make it as nice and sharp. But it's lit nicely. You can see detail all around the image. The color tone is nice. It's just, it just looks a little soft overall and a little tight in frame. But you know, again, the person that, that's commissioned is uh, going to love it. So, so uh, a nice job. Well done. It's the same print, but green. What more can I say? It's the same print. This is where we say it before that if you're going to enter for competition reasons, always pick the best print. Don't put the same image in of the same subject on a different background because all you're going to be doing is hurting your own chances when it comes to image um, and winning because your best print might be the fourth print that comes up. And by that point, the all impact is lost. So always make sure you're using your best image. Personally, I think it looks better on the red background than the green. But if the other, if, it was, if it was the the green had come up first and then the red one came up, I'd have said, oh, it's the same shot, different background. The impact is lost for me on this image. So always make sure you're using your best image uh, for competition. Don't think, oh, she's a pretty bride. She's an amazing newborn. Pick the pick your best one. It it, it, it will make you your chances of success much higher. 
Nice portrait. Nice portrait. Uh, good conversion of black and white. Again, just be careful of any skin softening here. It looks like it's slightly overworked on the skin here. Um, just tone that down just ever so slightly. And again, the catch lights are a little bit too prominent. It also looks like you've got a little bit of a diffused glow um, going on here with overall um, like an effect on the image. So it looks a little softer. This is a little bit diffused. Uh, the blacks to the left are, are completely are completely gone. So just again, by overall, just lift that, that black up uh, overall, and that would really help this image jump a lot higher. So, but a nice shot of the of a, of a little toddler there. So, so bravo. Oh, this is nice. Very good use of a single light and a reflector. Uh, if you, even if you just use the um, the, the rug, uh, the babies on it as a reflector, it's beautifully lit. The exposure is wonderful on this image. A good connection between here and again. But just watch the highlight on the right hand side. Uh, just coming ever so slightly on the right hand side there, and that would have helped this image a lot more. But it's a beautifully exposed print. Well done. Very nice, very nice indeed. Just be very careful the blacks at the bottom. Again, if you can bend, bend it. That right arm looks a little bit tense. Just relax that shoulder, bend the arm some more, and be very careful the highlight on 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 the subject's foot there. Uh, it looks a little bit warm. And again, I'm competing with the foot to the face and just bend that arm ever so slightly. But you've got a good little kick of light in there for the hair. The wave of the hair is very nicely handled. Uh, just watch the blacks at the bottom. But she's going to love that print. Well done. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. That is that is really that's a good capture. Whether that's a, I hope it's not a wedding. Um, you know, that's, that could be very interesting if that was, but it's a good capture that you've got a little bit of highlight, um, issues there when it comes to the back of the, uh, the, 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 the pillion rider, if that's the correct term that I'm using, you've burnt out the hair there again, just control the highlights ever so slightly, but I like the sepia tone on that. It's very, it's nicely done. And, um, I, this, this is where a title would come into effect. I really want to know more about this image. And I think a good title would really help elevate this image up here, but, uh, it's a, it, it's made me laugh. Um, and so well done. Good, good image to put in. Well done. I've got to admit a little uh, um, thing. The author of this picture put in two pictures for tonight's critique. Um, I've left yep. the other, other one of his pictures out. And fortunately, um, I've been hit by the nipple police this week, and his other his other picture had uh, had some uh, nipples in it. And I know that uh, Facebook would be kicking my account off if I put it back up to today after after yesterday's video. So I apologise to the author of this one for their their other image not being in tonight. That's so, fair enough. We, we have to keep the Facebook police happy. And um, but no, it's it's uh, wow. This is a good great portrait of a of a cat you know to, to get a cat doing anything you no know, it doesn't want to do is hard enough but to light it as nice as this is very very nicely well done you've got great tone there you can see all the detail in the fur and the whiskers very very nicely handled i just lift the blacks up ever so slightly they're starting to go very muddy in the shadows uh to the left of the image and also on the right hand side whether it's on the cushion, it's just starting to break up ever so slightly. Again, that could be the stream that we're watching it on, but just lift the shadows up ever so slightly, but a very, very nice exposed picture of a cat. Well done. This is cool. This is, I hope you had a very, very long lens because that looks like you're about to be lunch on that. <laughs> that but it's a beautiful, the tone at sunset or sunrise, it's beautiful. Nice and sharp. You're engaging with the subject here. Um, again, I hope this is in the wild because if it is in the wild, it's an even stronger capture. What I would have done just to help this up a little bit more is just take that strong twig on the right hand side out and just lift, just kind of remove that ever so slightly there. Um, but this is a nice print, good use of focal length, good use of depth of the field. And you know, that is to get the, get the line to look through down the lens at you there is, is very, very well done. You'd be, I'd be very happy if I took this. Gorgeous maternity portrait. Absolutely stunning. We've seen some, I think the, the, the maternity portrait game has really kind of stepped up in the last few years. And the people are really thinking about styling. They're thinking about thinking outside the box. This is a beautiful print. 
good tone. Skin's been worked, but not overly worked, which is, which is refreshing to see. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit more shape in the bride because we don't know how pregnant she is. Maybe she is very pregnant or just a little bit pregnant, but we don't know because I want to see more of the bump. If we just twist that right or left knee in some more to create more shape in here, we'd see more of the bump. We'd have a more of an idea of how uh, pregnant she is. Um, again, the lighting's a little bit harsh on her face. We've got a little bit of a shadow on her right eye there. And I'm just wondering if that black uh, by her right ear is completely gone. But but tonally, it's quite nice. I love the fact you've got the dress at the bottom. I just want to see a little bit more of, of the bump for a maternity shot. And again, a little bit more in the hands because they look a little bit muddy underneath the bump there but again she'll be over the moon with this so very very she'll be very happy so well done gorgeous maternity portrait absolutely stunning it's a little bit dark in the dark spots and it's a little bit hot in the hot spots you can see on her right arm here where the light has really kind of hit that forearm you've toned the um the highlights down ever so slightly on that it looks a little bit muddy um in compared to the bump there you can see where you've got some you can see that the, the the actual skin and the tonality of the of the bump then you go up into where the forearm is and that's gone it just you just whoever's uh, the author here has just dragged the highlights down just that little bit too much it looks a little bit kind of flat and contrasty so just be very careful use a modifier flavor it just just try not to tone try not to recover too much highlights in post production because this is what happens in from here um again be careful of the nose a bit more of a profile here would have helped this image a lot more and again just tidying up the dark spots on the background here would have would have would have gone this would have made this image a lot stronger but it's a nice portrait she, she'd love it so well done Ah, oh, look at the cuteness. Now, we don't award points for cuteness. Um, I don't shoot maternity. I haven't got the patience for it. We had Emily shot um, by Joe Tennant, and we were there for, I think, six hours. And I think we came away with, like, 20 prints. So I admire anyone that can shoot newborns because I haven't got the patience for it. Um, this is a lovely, nice exposed image in from here. Uh, it's nice to see something a bit different on the newborn. Uh, I would just clean the skin up a little bit more and again just lift the face up a little bit ever because you've got some dark shadows on the eyes there to so just move the light around a touch more and this would have been um, a much stronger image but overall you know it's a very very strong image so well done on that That's a very cute picture. Again, a newborn, uh, it's something that I don't do, as I said, but be careful of uh, where your light is. The light is obviously off to the right-hand side here because it's caught the baby's feet and the mum or dad's fingers on the right-hand side. Um, and it's, we're not quite hitting the face. So just bring that light around ever so, ever so slightly more or just lift the body up ever so slightly so we can see some more light on the face and less light on the lower half of the um, of, of the body, that, of the baby there. So, but again, this is a couple. You know, we, we've got a story here. We've got a dad's hands and a mum's hands with the baby um, on the inside there on, on, in, in both hands. So, so it's a good, powerful story there. Just be very careful of the light positioning on this image. I just need to do a bit of admin for a second, mate. So if you have That's a glug, right. I can... have a glug of your drink. I'm right. I'm all out of beer, mate. I need to get some more. My my uh... <laughs> uh, Tracy has to go. Oh no, Tracy, come back. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> we're we're down to uh, about, so, uh, about the last ten or fifteen, mate. So we perfect. We so we got one. We, so we got one uh, comment from Jane. Uh, so much to beginning. What's the difference of a seventy score as opposed to an eighty? So when we're scoring in the seventies. Um, that would be a sorry anything that scored 70 and above would be a merit in the regional and national competitions and anything over an 80 you start getting into bronze silver and gold so we just score prints numerically uh, we have a scoring chart here so we use you no know, uh, if i'm judging for um, different associations we generally judge from 70 to 74 then we go 75 to 79 80 to 84 85 to 89 90 to 94 and then 95 and above and so different scoring categories so 75 to 79 is good consistent professional work uh, good saleable work consistent with professional practice and then 80 and above would be a merit so we start to see above average skill and technique and that's when we start getting into uh, Yes, there has been a hundred scored, David Cameron. Um, we had uh, uh, Christina Lauder scored a perfect hundred at SWPP back in January, and I was on a scoring panel that scored David Ebenson 
uh, a perfect 100 at SWPP a couple of years ago. And then Kelly Brown scored the perfect 100 at WPPI this year. So it doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. Well, give me just two seconds, mate. I shall be back with you. It's nine o'clock. We're going two hours. Is know, everyone man. still there? Is everyone, yeah. everyone all right? Give me a thumbs up on the webcam if you're still awake. Everyone still there? <laughs> brilliant we still have 60 people with us across facebook and uh, and zoom so you can't be doing too Fantastic. badly mate. Right. good stuff all right give us a second let's come back into as i say we're down to our last uh, our last 10 images now so brilliant good stuff i know that everyone's getting some some great things uh, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, as I said, live print critique is the best way to learn. And um, so here we have a very nice portrait of a puppy. Uh, I like this a lot. The fact we haven't got it on, um, on, on a, on a chest or on a couch. It's, it's, it's nice and different. So straight away, I'm thinking it's original. Um, it's not, it's not playing. It's safe. It's a good image. Tone uh, the black and white is good. It's a little bit flat. I think a bit more contrast here would really help this image uh, jump up a little bit more. Uh, I love the use of focal length here. Depth of field is perfect. And a little bit more light on the dog's right-hand side of the face there would have been great. Um, but overall, this is really, really cool. I, if I was owning this dog, I'd have a massive print on the wall. So uh, nice you done, sir, or lady, madam. Yeah, person, I, love, I love that as well. <laughs> Cracking crack image. This is a cool, I like, this is a different image. So this looks like a Victorian portrait. Um, I can only think that this lady here is possibly marrying into an Asian family. Um, this is a portrait on her wedding day, given the uh, time. I could be wrong, but I'm just reading into it. This is, again, this is where a print title would really kind of uh, benefit. It's a little bit flat. It's a little bit underexposed overall, I think. The hands look quite muddy at the bottom there. Um, and again, her expression looks like she's kind of nervous. I want to see a bit more in the eyes. I want to see a little bit more emotiveness in the, in the, in the face there. But as a portrait, it's, it's nicely lit. It looks a little bit green. Uh, there's a little bit of color cast coming in here. So again, that could just be down to the fact it's a little bit flat and underexposed. So maybe lift it up a stop, uh, boost some contrast in here. And that would really, really help the image uh, go a bit higher. So, but again, as a portrait on, on, a, on a wedding day, it's nicely done, well done. A quick question for you on this one, Scott. Um, multiple catch lights in the eye. So we've, we've, I think we've got a reflector or something coming from the right-hand side. Are you a fan of yeah. a single, single catch light or you don't mind too much if there's... Uh, I don't mind too light. much. If, if they're using two lights, if they're using three lights, it does, I, it personally, I know some judges um, don't like it as much as others, but personally, I'm not too fussed uh, on that. I wouldn't mark it down for too many catch lights. If you're using three lights, you, you're going to see three lights. So what can you do? Thanks for that one. This is a bit pixelated because like. it's coming from Facebook, but... Uh. That's all right. What a cool location. Really, really cool image. A good placement of the of the uh, the subject's head there in between the square at the bottom. Uh, very, very nicely done on exposing for them. So obviously a very powerful flash has gone off there. I like the fact you've got the shadows at the, on the foreground. I love the fact that you've you, it could be a square crop, but you've got the leading lines on either side of it. It's very, very nicely done. Uh, again, it's a dancer, so you can see the, her feet across at the bottom. I would have maybe stood another couple of inches to the right, so her head was completely in that square. The square to her left, our right, is a little bit muddy. I would have probably would have lifted that up or cloned it out um, and swapped it over for a lighter panel. I'm, and I'm now asking the question, well, why is that one so muddy? So I would have, I would have got rid of that. And also to the top of the image, you had the, uh, a little nodule coming down from the top. And to the left on the light there, you also have a little, like a, it could be a little catch or something there. I would have taken care of that as well. Just, but again, I'm nitpicking. It's a very, very strong portrait. The, the, this, uh, this sitter would be very, very happy with this. So well done on the author. This is a nice print, lovely negative space, leading lines, nicely exposed, good expression. I'd be over the moon if, if I was the parent of this child. I'd be really, really happy with this image. Uh, just to help tidy it up, I would just the little hot spots on the left-hand side, the little cats just to the left of the, of the little, the little boy's uh, right shoulder, and all the little things that are just distracting me from the uh, from the face. And so little things, I've said that before, everyone. Just little, like, get your little hit, Jay. 
on your keyboard in Photoshop and just kind of use the heel brush um, there. And that would have helped this guy a lot further, but it's a great exposure, great expression. Well done. Another street image, uh, another New York image. This is again, this is a, a, a this is like you've gone, gone for a long focal length here. Uh, again, good use of compression. It's not as sharp as I'd like it to be. Again, it could just be um, in the uh, in the stream, but the guy sitting down on the crate, it looks like it's a little bit blurred, and looks like you've just missed focus on this one, which is a shame because it's a nice it's a nice image. I, I'm quite hungry. I could murder a hot dog right about now, uh, if I'm honest. Uh, and you've made me kind of think about my stomach. So um, well done. But it's a good street capture. Well done. Again, great street capture. I love the graffiti on the walls, the boxes. The you know, the, the, I think this would have been um, this would have been uh, a good shot to capture during the day to see the, how busy this this market would have really, really been. Again, you've used uh, a, a, a slower focal, uh, sorry, focal, a slower shutter speed here to get a little bit of movement in the subject. There, there's not as much of a story here. As the other images, especially this, the first one is the most powerful image. So again, just think about using the best image rather than putting two or three in. But it's a nice capture. Well done. Macy's, everyone's friend. This is a good job. So straight away, this author has, has made sure that everything is straight, which is nice to see. Uh, there's thought process here. I was Andy Thomas, fine art photography. I've seen the logo at the top now. Um, so I would have cropped in Andy slightly more to the left to get rid of that red traffic light. Uh, and also I would have just lifted the contrast a little bit more. Now, obviously this is late at night, so you're probably, um, you know, crossing the road or on a bus or something. So you, you might've been moving here. So it's hard to get a sharp shot, but again, my eyes being pulled away to that red light on the left-hand side, so just crop in slightly on the left. That would have been a lot stronger, but it's a, it's a nice capture. Nice one, mate. Uh, he said, "This is a night bus tour on all of those uh, photos that these." Uh, oh, okay, fair enough. So, so I was right. Think so. See, I, I can read into an image more than more than I thought. <laughs> wow, that's a glacier and Northern Lights. I think it, this makes me that a little bit a... jealous. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I've, I've only seen the Northern Lights twice, um, and not really properly. It's both been it's, uh, cloudy on the first time, and then I was in the Faroe Islands in September, and we just about saw them through the gap in the clouds. But to see them dancing like this is my absolute dream. And well done for thinking outside the box. The safe shot is to be outside and photograph them in the sky, a completely black sky, but the fact that you're in a glacier and you've shot through the, the ice and we just see the little slither of the aurora in the middle there is very nicely done. I would like to see a little bit more contrast here and a little bit more exposure overall, but um, on my, it, you, you're drawing us through as a viewer into the subject. So just lift it up ever so slightly, make that green pop a little bit more and maybe just crop the top half of that I, top bit of the um, the image at the top there. So the aurora is more in the center and that would have been a fantastic image, but I am very, very jealous of this image. So well done for making me green of, with envy. As green as the aurora. I'd be happy with this on my living room wall as well. I think it's absolutely stunning. I would. This is a, I think this is a great, great capture. Well done. It's a nice shot. It's a good, powerful portrait. Again, that uh, the, the light on the right there is perfect. The light, I would have put maybe a reflector on the, on the left-hand side there. We've got a little bit of a shadow creep, creeping across uh, the subject's face. So a bit more of a kicker there would have been uh, a bit more beneficial. I like the composition. The crop is nice. I like um, how the subject is. You've got good use of tone. You've got whites. You've got you know, the blacks haven't, uh, haven't gone at all. It's a nice capture. Just a bit more of a reflector on the left-hand side would have helped with that, with that, with that shadow of, from the nose there. And that's it. And that's it. Wow. That's it. So do you want to wrap up for us, Scott? I'm going to hand the, the screen back to you so people can see your, uh, your beautiful face. There oh, we go. Wow, that's a shame. Um, <laughs> well, I want to say, th so how many, how many have we got? How many have we still got left? We have still got, uh, one second. We've got, still got 22 on Facebook and there's 28 in the room. So we've got uh, 50 people still with us. Out of, Fantastic. Uh, that's a, Well, thank you for sitting through. It's been 
two hours and 10, 12 minutes since we started. So thank you for sitting through. I really hope that you've learned something um, in that critique there, whether it's been your image or you've seen something in someone else's image that's really kind of thought, oh, I didn't think about it like that. Um, so, you know, if you've got any questions, this was going to go on the Facebook page. So I'll, I'll check it tomorrow morning. I've got nothing else to do tomorrow. <laughs> so we can I can look at some questions for you. Want to message me privately. Uh, my Instagram is at the edge pick. So follow me on there. Message me through Instagram. That'd be perfect. And do we have an answer on who is the furthest away? Uh, to be fair, we've split that between our Facebook and our okay. stream. So what would be fairest to do would probably toss a coin. Um, let's have a quick look. So what do we have furthest away? Southampton, Essex, London, Manchester, St. Albans. Muneer said he's on Mars tonight. Um, <laughs> nice try. We've got Derek in East Lothian. Uh, Lincolnshire, Scotland. Glasgow. Uh, West Lancashire, Hampshire, Belfast, Edinburgh. Um, what we should probably do, mate, I can see the list of who's been online. We could put it into a random generator and we could probably announce it on the Facebook page tomorrow. It's That's probably, perfect. Cause probably the, the fairest yeah. way of doing it. So what I'm doing, guys, the person that is the furthest away is going to get a free hours mentoring session with me to go through all of your images in more detail. And we can kind of really kind of get down to it. And if you've got any questions as far as that's concerned, then we can, I'm doing, happy to do an hour for free for the person that is the absolute furthest away. Or we can do what a random, it's up to you. We do it, it's up to you, Jamie, how you want to do that. But one person tonight who's here will get one hour's free one-to-one -one with me at some point this week or next. I think that's really generous of Scott. And, you know, overall, we, we've had a fantastic evening. Everyone's got involved, put some prints in. I've learned a lot. I'm sure that everyone else in the, the group has learned a lot as well. And we're really lucky to have Scott coming on board as, uh, as chair of judging or head of judging. And, uh, chair of qualifications, mate. Chair of qualifications, so, um, it, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't just write it down. <laughs> <laughs> so so we'll, we'll see plenty more of Scott. And, uh, and that's a, a fantastic thing for us as an institute. And I'm hoping that we can do some more of these again regularly because uh, I know how much benefit everybody's got from it. So, mate, thank you so much for tonight. You can it's go head off, and, head off and get a drink and something to eat now. And uh, the rest of us will probably oh, do the same. I've got a bottle of beer with my name on it. I don't know about anyone else. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. And thanks to everyone for tuning thanks, in and getting involved.